media folks are uh, ready for us to begin. Beautiful, thank you. Um, all right, uh, welcome to the uh, regular meeting of the Rockbridge, Rockbridge, Stockbridge, <laughs> Rochester Unified District uh, regular meeting here at the Rochester School. Uh, having a quorum, I call the meeting to order at 6.42. Um, adjustments to the end, uh, agenda. I have added uh, uh, two board comments by myself on uh, both of them will take about two minutes. Uh, does anyone else have any other adjustments to the agenda? I think Janie said in our email. Uh, non-executive so session. Uh, right. Even though she's going to be late, she wanted the executive and session. And that is Janie's. Okay. And that would be an executive session for uh, personnel. For personnel, right? Okay. Uh, we will add. Uh, so we've added board item, board comment 6A and B. Um, we'll add that under 13. We'll call that exec, executive session personnel. Um, so uh, while we were waiting, um, Ethan, yeah. as our, yes. our, our usual timekeeper, we, we oh you want me to be timekeeper? Okay. We uh, went through and we, we figured out a bunch of times. Oh, sorry. So the first public comment will be 10 minutes. The consent agenda will be three. Mm -hmm. My board comments will be uh, three minutes. The superintendent has said he will take five. Without the business manager, we don't know how long she's going to take. We think 20. She on her way. I'd say like 40. She's on her way. She's following me. Um, the principals need five minutes, and we're adding them at 7.3. Is, is Carrie not? Oh, Carrie's here. Carrie is here, and Carrie needs 10 minutes. Yeah, Carrie needs 10. Um, policy review without policies listed. Are there policies in the packet? No, I don't think so. So we'll, we can we can uh, skip number nine. The annual report update. Ethan, how long do you think that'll take? Uh, five at most. Okay. Uh, facilities projects. Uh, probably five. All right. Um, community engagement update. Building. Building how committee. Was ten. Ten. Building, building committee. committee. I said ten. Do we have? Um, if we're if we're, if we're doing community up engagement update in that too, let's make it fifteen. Oh, ten for great. community engagement. Oh, so ten for each, ten for building and ten for community engagement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, action items. The last public comment will give five. Janie wants an executive session. We don't know how long that'll be, but uh, I think uh, that's our list, which is very good. I need to, I have a, a nine o'clock phone call I'm supposed to be participating in, hopefully. Um, all right, so uh, I guess let's begin. So public comment, Mason. Yeah. Um, I had a couple of quick things. And uh, I'd like to share Thank you, Mason. this. Thank you. Uh, prior to the merger, Bruce, you might remember, one of my questions was, what are we going to do about transporting the children as we move forward? And it seems like we may have missed a little bit of a window on receiving a grant money from Volkswagen. Thank you. Uh, but I wanted to bring it to the attention of the board that it's kind of sad to see other SUs moving quickly on this issue and where are we going to go forward i i know bruce that and congratulations on retiring but i'm hoping i'm not retiring well moving on then. <laughs> but before you move on to leave a legacy with us i sure would like you to horn in on this and and see what you can make happen for our school we have how much time left on our, our contract for uh, don't know two years or one up. year I think it's. I think this is the second year is the one that we're budgeting for this time. So I think one more past it. Maybe. So, but but certainly, could we? Could you know? Be, be nice. Well, I, when we this reach all, out to them and this, find them if they're doing anything in terms I did, of hybrid. I did ask Paulers at one point whether this was going to be something that they would get in on with us, and um, I didn't get a whole lot of good feedback at the time. So. I, I don't can't want to say that. that that's Bruce, it. I can't so, actually hear what you're saying. So. I said I did ask Butlers if we were, if they were open to this, uh -huh. and uh, I didn't get a whole lot of feedback uh, as a private carrier. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe some of the districts that have gotten in on it own their own buses. Um, cuts through a lot of things, but I'll check 
and find out. Uh, There's just probably wanted to bring it to our round. attention. Um, uh, and on the subject of electric items, did you ever get a chance, to, or maybe Bonnie's helped you, what happened to the Rochester electric trimmer? Can't find it, Mason. Can't, it walked away. Uh, I, I understand. <laughs> these things kind of walk away sometimes, these tools. So we don't own one anymore. That's my understanding, we do not. But we do own a uh, gasoline trimmer. How did that happen? We went from an electric trimmer to a gasoline trimmer? All I can say is it was here when I came. It's still in service so, in condition. We but we don't have any it. history of what happened. I don't. Just to remind the, the board, that was a, a big development back when that trimmer was purchased. It was an issue that uh, a lot of parents were involved with. It wasn't just me. Um, thank you, Bonnie, for the signage. The, I really appreciate that. Uh, as I mentioned to you earlier tonight, uh, this morning when I went to work, it hadn't been put out yet. When I came home tonight, it had already been pulled in. And so, and we kind of missed a little window because I know there's this issue about where to place it. And, uh, you know, back in the middle of December, the town of Rochester dug up the whole front by the pipe. And it was a great opportunity. We should have just thrown a, a post in the ground, four foot, and put a platform so that we can put the sandwich board on it. And then if we need to, take a bicycle lock and lock the signage on it so that some of us who work in hours that are not school hours can actually see it, you know, have a 48-hour thing. The ground's not frozen, uh, so maybe we could put a 4x4 four four post in the ground, four feet high, and put a platform on it so that you can see it driving. And, you know, just, just beyond the fire hydrant, someone right there, it's a solution to be able to leave it out. Um, can I ask a follow-up question, Mark? Go ahead. Um, why, why does the sign have to be brought in? There's, Sandwich board. Um, it snows. Because of where we have to place it, if we get snow in the night and snow plowing is being done, then that's going to knock it over. There was also concerns because it sits right, basically right on the sidewalk, that vandalism tampering would happen with it. Um, so the custodians bring it in when they leave at night and we put it out first thing in the morning. Okay. Um, he did make the cut. Do we have any idea why they can put the public skating sign on the light pole and we can't put anything up there? I have no idea. Okay. I, I'm guessing it would have to do with size. Mason, I mean, the public skating sign is... But they had the big Winterfest sign was up there too. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, okay. Interesting. And is that uh, it's a, a town a town poles or is it the it's, you can't put some power poles? It's a power, power pole. Most likely doesn't meet state standards on Route 100 to have the skating sign stuck out into the road. Right. If you're in a bus and you happen to look south, even that small of a sign is blocking <laughs> the bus driver's view. Just for any signs on time. Yeah. Yeah, and that, just to just to say again, that is one of the issues of placing the sign on the other side of the driveway. It gets up to a certain height, it's going to block the view. Even that small little sandwich board sign, it's going to block the car coming south. That's why I'm suggesting, yeah, by the way, that fire hydrant hit, we had quickly thrown a post in the ground when they dug up the whole thing, but we see the ground's not frozen. Four foot, so it's easy enough to put the sign on it. Maybe a way to tie it down just so it doesn't blow away. And I'm not saying it works for everyone, but a number of parents did stop in and thank us for having the sandwich board sign. They, yes, so I, people I, are seeing it. I agree. It, it is uh, a way that is conveying some information to people. And I just had one more quick question now. There you go. Uh, I missed a few meetings, but a while back, when we were in this space, sure. we talked about when are we going to remodel it so it reflects the merger. Uh, to me, it's housekeeping. It's just like, what's going I think on? it's Why more. Is it so slow. What's going on? I, I would honestly door? say, as someone who's one of the athletic directors during the merger over in Bethel and Royalton, that it's 
to come out in the Z cast to just take these down. There's some people who would have some different feelings about that. I think there's some things that we could update, but I'm not sure. So we had a merger. The, the board has not given direction to take that stuff down yet. Mm -hmm. From who? The board has not given the principal, the administration, direction to do that. We've not asked them to do that yet. We've well, not I had that. That would automatically happen in the, pro in the process of being a mer merger vote. That this is now a merged school and this is not appropriate. But that's all I have. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing your opinion. Um, you know, the, it's, the, the, the board has had some uh, uh, brief conversations around uh, some of the historical artifacts that are in this building. And, you know, we've, we've in general terms, just discussed, you know, uh, uh, interfacing with uh, the, the, the Rochester Historical Society and the select board. And I'm sure that will come up uh, when we uh, start having uh, community engagement meetings about the buildings as well, which is uh, coming up later in item 10.4 uh, or 9.4. I think they're numbered weird. But yes, yeah, so we, it's. Not box it up. Just box it up and properly store it so that. These, these kids today feel that this is the beginning of sure. their... Sure. I, 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 I certainly hear, hear your opinion, and the board, like I said, the board has had some conversations about it, but we haven't, we haven't figured out how to move forward yet. And again, I think a, a lot of our thinking has been that having a community discussion about, about how this is all treated and handled is, 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 is perhaps at least the next step forward. Um, any other public comment? I'll be brief. Um, um, my name is Rachel Cunningham, and I've handed out a little flyer here. Just an update. This is a news report that came out early this afternoon. Um, one of our steering committee members, uh, Vic Rovato, and Council on Aging Catherine Shankman worked very hard to get us on the map. Um, we are um, one of the finalists for a grant. And it's a, a multi uh, multi community effort for uh, community development. And later this summer, we'll find out. Uh, there's another process later. We'll find out this summer if we actually earn this grant. But uh, the details are in there. Vic and Catherine will come out with more details for the board in particular. So you guys can maybe think of some things that we can we can work together on. And to that end, on the 13th of February, if you'd like to mark your calendar. So far with yeah. you. On the, on the 13th of February, um, Envision Rochester is hosting uh, a community action workshop that will feed into this grant process. So part of, part of what we're trying to do is reach out to the community particularly the school, and, and to work with the school board on ideas about uh, facility management and, and different ideas, programming. Um, we have some things coming up in the, in the uh, spring and then also in the summer. But the community workshop is happening on the 13th. It's in the evening from 6.30 to 8.30. Um, it will be at Pierce Hall, and we would love to have representatives from the school board there so that you can sort of interact or answer any questions that the folks might have in the community. The workshop itself is to develop an action plan and prioritize some of the projects, including uh, the school building uh, but that's, that's, that's empty, how to rework it, how to use it, and, and to work hand in glove with the board. So we'd love to have reps there, principals and, and others um, other there including folks from Stockbridge, so please come. Please come, because this, this is, we're all interconnected. So that's happening in, in February. Yeah, and um, also to Dr. Tillon that I've been talking to Annie Mackay about yeah. this as well. And um, it is really not just about, you know, our, our building over there. It's really, there's a lot of different topics that are up for discussion sure. with this community, um, agriculture, infrastructure, um, recreation and outdoor activities, um, housing, local housing, our commerce, our, our arts and culture. And I, from what I spoke with her, the idea was to, to sit down and try to get all these ideas out that the community has and then try to focus some smaller, some like the top four things that possibly we could really do in the community. 
um, at this time and really um, create steps, an action plan going forward. Yeah, I was being really brief. Can yeah. Ten minutes. Well, I just want to also say that um, this workshop is a culmination of all the work we did last year. So there's a whole series of brainstorming that various elements from the community came together last year. So, so we're prioritizing right. those ideas now across sectors. Definitely agriculture, definitely recreation, definitely education, whole slew of things. Yeah. Economic development. But your, your point's well made, Amy, yeah. because the, the goal is to feed into this so that we can really pinpoint what it is that we need as a community so we're competitive. Great. And this is just one source of funding. There are others. But I spoke to the, the Federal Reserve in Boston today. They said they're very interested in working with rural communities in Vermont. So this is a high priority for them. Very high. So. So when it's White River Valley, it's not White River Valley School, like SU, it's just White River Valley. Area. Yes, different communities in it. Okay. And, and again, Vic and, and Catherine are going to come out with all those details, okay. and they'll, they'll release a, a, a press release on that. And I'm happy to grab your email so that they make sure you okay. receive that. If you want. And, and who was Envision Rochester? It, it's a, it's a community-based organization. That is what? Uh, we'll be focused on working with the school board, with the town select board, with local businesses, with local community activists and others to help create a space for dialogue that's independent, that's, that's based on research, that's based on a lot, of, um, a lot of networking and brainstorming, and we've been working since last year. So, and I believe it's also to help really get um, people together who maybe wouldn't necessarily volunteer to do stuff, That's right. have ideas and how to help focus those ideas and actually create action plans of how to attain yep. some of these things that maybe just brainstorm some people's, you know, I, uh, minds. Yeah. Yeah, so we, so we share resources and energy. There's only so much all of us can do. <laughs> well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Carrie, did you want to have a public? Yeah, um, just really quickly, I shared with Bonnie today a little bit of <laughs> waking up in the middle of the night and having like major anxiety about middle school, um, which is totally new for a lot of us Rochester folks that we're having to you know think about um, middle school and high school. Um, but I just wanted to volunteer to help any one of you. Maybe that's Bonnie, maybe that's Lindy. I'm the sort of person that I'm going to literally be building a spreadsheet. <laughs> of like, these are the schools, this is, I mean, the questions I have, how many kids are in the school? What grades? Um, what transportation is available? What times are those buses? What extracurriculars are available? Are there, is there transportation to the extracurriculars? What's the start and end times of the school? Um, and like this is something you're gonna day. create here. Well, I mean, I probably would on my own just because I'm, you know, that sort of person. And, I, and for me especially, I think, when you have three kids and you're thinking about right. potentially having an elementary, a middle school, and a high school kid, well, I want to live here, you know? And so I want to figure out how I can do it and be saying If you're know. willing to share that type of information, I think that's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't we, yeah, didn't didn't we sure. pull a lot of that together? We, we have some of it, and we do do, as I was sharing with Carrie yeah. this morning, we'll do another middle school fair. So we right. invite all the schools from the area to come. Some of those questions that Carrie answered are, uh, that Carrie asked are answered at that fair. Yeah. But as we talked this morning a bit, um, it seems to make sense that we would gather from those schools print types of materials that we could put together into a type of a packet yeah. that we could actually give parents in addition to um, you know the, the school the school fair that we do. Right, because I mean some parents just don't even know what questions to ask. Well, exactly. What should they be looking for when they're looking at their middle and high school? And it is just very new to us. I know this is old hat for Stockbridge, so I appreciate your patience with us um, learning all this. But that's why we like the idea of the schools coming here to meet with parents because right. it it sort of generates questions that they might not have thought of asking, like, is there a late bus for sports? Yeah. Is there transportation back to the town after sports practice? Student fees are a big one, too. Yeah. Huh? Student fees are a big one. Student right. fees. What we had, you have to pay to do what? We had back in the day in Stockbridge, I don't know if it's in how much of Michelle Ritchie's files you have, but there we had, it was a, an 11 by 17 brochure that, that basically did that. It just said, you know, Wickham Bethel, da, da da here's the sports 
reports they offer, yeah. here's, you know, the, the buses come, you know, come yes or no, and it kind of put those all out and then said, here's the guidance person or the person at each school to contact, and then we did the same thing. We had the representation come one Thursday evening, and I think we had like a spaghetti, the PTO put on a spaghetti dinner. Yeah. And I think it was similar to what was done here last year. Right, and the, the feedback before. I got uh, from last year is there weren't a lot of families, but to invite fifth and sixth grade parents, so I parents can be start to really thinking like, about it. Like, I them. would love for my child to like visit some different schools, and that that can take a long time to sort of facilitate. And so yeah, and there are, there are middle schools that have open houses in the spring, so knowing that that's available, right. and knowing when, when they are. Right. Yeah. There was They're one very one. helpful. One they popped up recently. Send, they typically send those right. dates to us, and we typically share them with sixth graders. Now, sharing them with fifth graders is a new idea that I don't ask me why I didn't think of sooner. But um, so we do get those dates for those open houses. Um, and then I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I guess I've been thinking a little bit about this. And I'm not sure that this is actually a good idea for our community, but just throwing it out there. I think a big part of the anxiety about moving on to a middle school is that our kids do scatter and they go everywhere. And so, you know, I might choose a school that no other families choose. Right. Um, which I think is the benefit of choice, but choice. But I also wonder if there's any benefit to designating a select few um, and maybe having a liberal waiver policy, you know? But steering families towards two or three options, um, just so, mm -hmm. I don't know. I think that would keep kids to, fam or, you know, our communities together a little more. Um, yeah. again, I don't know if that's a really great option. Right. But. I know it sounds like, to me, the feedback I get from sixth grade parents is it's about transportation is obviously transportation. the biggest well, piece and the direction yeah. they are traveling for work. So when one component yeah, that's doesn't work, yeah. so yeah, I guess it I just depends it on right. which north, south, east, or west you end up going. Bruce, work. maybe you know, if you designate a school, do you tend, I guess my only thought is maybe that school would be more likely to have a late bus for mm -hmm. our um, kids. We were saying you're only one of three that we're going to, I don't know. They have to be very careful to do for all their partners the same. same. And that has a lot to do with, the only one that really has a pretty liberal way of doing this is Stratford. Um, they designate Thetford Academy, but the people who can find a reason to, to want to go somewhere else, and they state that reason to the board, are likely to get a opportunity to go somewhere else like Hanover or Kimberley Union or one of those places. Um, but they have had a relationship with Hefford County for a long, long, I'm talking 80 to 100 years probably of that, so. Well, anyway, so like I said, I don't know if it's a good idea or not. We are 10 minutes over. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> just 10 minutes over. Well, thank you. Um, well, just, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure Lindy and Bonnie uh, uh, will thing. follow up with you. Uh, moving to the consent agenda, we have uh, a packet with minutes of the uh, uh, special meeting and minutes of the regular meeting. I would entertain a motion to uh, approve those as, as presented. I shall move. Do I hear a second? Second. A motion has been made and seconded to approve the uh, packet of minutes. Uh, any discussion or amendments? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? The minutes are approved. Uh, uh, my two board comments are, are very quick. Uh, first of all, I sent, uh, I, I sent the board uh, and the, the principals uh, an article that I found very interesting about uh, uh, a pre-K effort in uh, uh, Western Kentucky in the Appalachian region where they uh, took a small school bus, outfitted it uh, as a pre-K style uh, 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 classroom and took it to communities to, to offer pre-K uh, in areas that are underserved by registered pre-K. Um, and uh, use that as a, a, as a way of, of, of doing outreach, a way of identifying children and getting, uh, uh, they, they found that they got more family commitment when the family saw the way that a three or you know, a grandparent saw the way that a three or four year old was engaged um, and, 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 and learned instead of you know, just sitting at the grandparent's house. 
So I'm not saying we should do that. What I'm, I'm saying it's an interesting article. It's something I think we should read and think about in advance of, of, of our retreat, um, looking at how uh, uh, rural communities are, are, are serving a dispersed population, uh, I think, is, is, is something that uh, would be valuable. The second thing, and then and, and after that kind of hopeful note, the second piece of news I wanted to, to, to mention is, uh, I, was, I was mentioning it to Bruce earlier, um, one of the things the legislature is, is, is taking up uh, this year is, is discussion about reinstating um, uh, a, a share of the funding for school construction and, uh, and renovation uh, being paid uh, out, out of Montpelier like it was up until about 13 years ago, I want to say 2007, 2008 it stopped. Um, and one of the things that I was hearing uh, that may be, may be tied to that um, is that uh, one of uh, Governor Scott's initiatives in the first year of the biennium was to push for a 5.5 to 1 st uh, uh, teacher to, to, or staff to, to student ratio. Um, and when that came out, the numbers for our districts were not anywhere near that. There were about three uh, in the VT Digger article. And the, per the people that I was talking to were saying that, that they were hearing about it as a volunteer, uh, as a voluntary offer. You would be eligible for state aid if you agreed, you know, to, 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 to get a state incentive if you agreed that, that your school or your district would conform to staffing ratios. But the other thought was that it might be mandatory. So. I'm not trying to, to, to say that we all need to start writing letters, but I think it would be interesting, uh, and I don't think we have to uh, rush to do it, but just in terms of general strategic planning, if we had to, if we had to uh, conform to Phil Scott's ratios, what would that look like? Carl, I'm sorry, I, I, I misheard. What, what's the ratio that's being floated, do you know? 5.5. To one. one? Yes. 5.5%. And there's a, the, 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 there's a formula for it on the AOE. There's a document that, that, that goes through. That I want to say we're at like 3.1 and you're at 3.5 or something like that. Okay. I mean, they, they talk about who's exempt. Like, I don't think cafeteria workers count, but I think paras do. Or, but If they follow along the same lines as before, it's anyone with a, with a license is yeah. what they I, I, sure I, Like I said, there's uh, the, the when, when I was hearing this, I went and looked back, and the, the, the uh, d deepest thing I saw was a Digger article that, that gets into it and references an AOE thing. Um, and like I said, I'm, I'm hoping it's not something that we're going to have to, <laughs> to address, but I think it would be good to know where we stand. Yep. Okay, well, I had board comment, too. Okay. <laughs> um, the Stockbridge uh, town clerk had um, uh, emailed uh, in regards to uh, what to be putting in the Stockbridge Town Report because traditionally Stockbridge Town Report and School Report was in one book. Mm -hmm. That's that hasn't happened for. I mean the the what what. It's still the, in that book. Last, no, last year the only thing that was in the book was the SU paper. Right, so, so, by mistake. Oh, so that's the question is that the SU. Um, yeah, the SU shouldn't be. And I think that that should, I agree that it should not be in there. I think it's confusing for mm -hmm. people. Yeah. Um, I was so kind of wondering, so Jenny had made the uh, comment of possibly just for the last page making a quick letter that just says, your school information was going to be shipped separately in another month or two, and the, the date, excuse me, the date and the time and the location of the annual meeting. Um, I thought it was a great idea. I thought yeah. it would be helpful for Stockbridge sure. residents just to, when they get to the back of the book, they go, well, where's that Sure. I mean, there should probably be a, same, a similar page in the Rochester book as well. It has never been in a lot. I take that back. It, traditionally, it has been a separate report. We have the school report and the town report. So it's been separate right, for many, right. we many, were, many we years. Were, we were always separate until they moved us to the same day, and then it became stupid to mail two things. Right. Um, and we've been on a separate day for a number of years. Sure. I mean, I don't know if um, anybody can if, comment if, on if, how many uh, years. If, if, if you don't think the Rochester booklet needs it, that's fine. Um, I'm going to talk about town meeting under uh, okay. uh, building committee. Um, is is that something that you could write up or yeah, I can write just it something and quick? Send that, it around to everybody. And it is a kind of the they are trying to get their book out to print. They, I think there's it was due last week to go out to print. So again, just something very quick that just says right. and make sure date and, time and, 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 and if uh, you guys can make sure that we don't put the superintendent. I or not send any of my stuff. 
and cool. there was the superintendent's letter got letter. sent over to her. My we can okay. not go to Stockbridge okay. or just okay. So when you reach out to her, just ask her to print the Make sure not. I think you both did tell her not to put yeah. anything in other than what Yes, but it seemed like she was questioning it again today with the with the email. So I think it's her um, first we'll, we'll clarify and get this over. Around. Okay, so then um, next I just wanted to say that um, uh, we've been working, Bonnie um, has started to work on um, senior scholarships this year, so hopefully we'll be able to move that uh, forward and be able to, to have that offering again this year. I just quickly, and I don't know when, but I asked for an executive session. I don't yes. know. Yes, yes. In there. You got, you got that yeah, in put it. Uh, We put it under 13 for other. Okay. We are over time, Mason. Is your is your point the chamber? With the uh, Rochester, if we haven't published, you, if it hasn't gone to the printer yet, why not put in a similar? Because of all the transformation activity, that it would be a good positive uh, mention if it, it yeah, hasn't gone. And it would be the exact same thing, right? Mm -hmm. So, so we if we beat them, about that yeah, if it hasn't gone to the printer yet, why not? All right. Thank you, Mason. Bruce. Uh, several, a couple things. Uh, Bruce, can you just speak up? It's yeah, we've, uh, we've we started a search for the special ed director. Mm -hmm. uh, we have narrowed from about 12 down to 5, and we're going to be conducting interviews on uh, uh, Valentine's Day. All day. How fitting. Oh. <laughs> Are you going to be on the committee? Sped <laughs> love. On the committee. Uh, we have uh, about 12 people actually on the committee. And uh, I think. Uh, the Do you want to be asking who are they? Who are the people in the You're going to have me tell you uh, from have. memory. Uh, <laughs> most of them, I can tell you their roles, most of them are. Special educators, okay. um, some of them uh, school psychologists, Bill Ketter is on it. Uh, there are two principals. There's one parent uh, from who, who wanted to be on it badly, and uh, she's been invited. Um, a couple people didn't show up to the first meeting, but they will be there for the, uh, for the next one when we actually interview people. Three of the uh, Special Ed Director candidates are practicing Special Educator Directors in Vermont. So uh, there's some good experience at the table. Uh, we also have two other people whose resumes look very, very good. So uh, we'll see what we get. Uh, I feel pretty fortunate to be in a position with that many candidates to interview. Okay. These days it's hard to do that. So. Uh, the next thing, and I think uh, Bonnie and Lindy will talk about lead, but I, I want everybody to know that there seems to be um, a resurgence or a conversation taking place at the state level about literacy improvement. And uh, I think Phil Baruth has been talking about it. I think the Secretary of Education has been talking about it and uh, kind of feel like uh, many districts are a little behind us for once in this effort. Now, and I'm hoping that the more conversations that we, that happen, uh, the more um, possibilities there might be for grant funding oh. to add to what you already have. So, and which would be very, very nice if we can do that. So, um, I guess you keep your eye on that. Um, and I, I did look at the principal's report, and, and they are going to talk about the lead results. Um, and so I just wanted to mention that that's important to talk about, because we have our reports back now, and they're going to talk about a game plan for moving forward. Uh, pretty much everybody in the SU that is involved in a school was affected. We didn't have anybody that said, you know, everything's fine. Uh, they had made their uh, the window so small that everybody was had to do some work on their uh, plumbing and that kind of thing. So I'll let Bonnie and Lindy talk about how it affected uh, here. So okay. I'm good. All right, thank you, Bruce. We decided you had 20 minutes. Oh, that's a good point. 
Let's uh, uh, let's let you go, Carrie. We're gonna jump and let Carrie go so that she can. Because uh, oh, okay. there's no way it's only 20 minutes. I tried to tell it's 40, but. Thank you. I'm trying to save you, my dear. Maybe Thank she you. wants to stay. I can put my kids to bed. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I just thought I would do a quick update um, for you about One Planet. Um, so we've had a really great right year in both Stockbridge and Rochester One Planet. Um, we have all returning site coordinators and head teachers, and that makes a huge difference to um, just the fluidity of the program and um, consistency of it. Um, both sites, we've seen an increase in enrollment. Stockbridge, we are averaging about 11 kids a day, um, and that's up from last year. In Rochester, we're averaging 19 kids a day, and that's also up. Um, and numbers traditionally at both sites increase in the spring because we run a, um, running programs that are kind of an addition to our normal programming stuff. Um, so that's great. Um, just to highlight a few things from the summer, I don't think I've done a report out since the summer, but. Um, we had maybe an average of 25 kids a day uh, during our summer program, Rockbridge Summer, um, which takes place at the Stockbridge School. Uh, we did amazing mosaics. Each week we have a theme, and all of our programming um, goes around that theme. Uh, we did amazing mosaics, team building, eco kids, and Hawaiian hullabaloo. Uh, all the kids did two weeks of Red Cross swim lessons at the pool. Um, and then as a new addition, we did a fifth week, kind of a specialty camp that uh, was a mountain bike camp. And uh, we filled up that program, 15 slots, and we had kids from six different towns. So I thought that was very cool um, to have it bring in such a wide range of kids. Um, some highlights from this year so far for after school in Stockbridge. We've done archery, um, we did an improv class, and we're doing drama right now. Um, those are all things that we've never offered in Stockbridge before, and I think they've gone really well. In Rochester, we did mountain biking in the fall, um, we did filmmaking this winter, and we're currently doing, um, I don't know, film with people in the fall too. Uh, currently doing a robotics program, which I've been fortunate to participate in and watch the kids, and it, tell you guys it's like this stuff is amazing I mean it's just amazing to watch kids take this very complicated huge box of pieces and put together a robot with you know moving parts claws that can pick up things there they can use, do it manually and they're just starting to do with the programming and um, they make they can make songs the other day, <laughs> I programmed, programmed mine to do a Star Wars theme, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> um, and just wanted to mention some partnerships. So we partner with Finding Our Stride in, in Rochester. They provide us with a stipend to pay a uh, running coach to work with kids in the spring. Um, and then we work with Orange County Sheriff in Stockbridge. We're offering a program called LEAD, which is law law enforcement against drugs, and um, it's a free program that they offer um, to our kids. We partnered with Rasta this summer and in the fall. Um, in the, well, and I should also mention Green Mountain Bikes. We've been working with them to have a trailer of youth mountain bikes available for our kids, and um, they, uh, they allowed us to use that trailer every week for six weeks for free, so it's like, at least 600 bucks worth of equipment. Um, for money, uh, the Rochester site coordinator applied for a mini grant. Um, uh, so for money is a uh, financial literacy program. Uh, of course, they make it a lot more fun than that with kids. The kids like have fake money. They learn about um, budget. Um, they decide what to buy. They've got a certain amount of money. They have to build something, and so they have to buy the um, the items they need to build it, and uh, with you know a set budget. So it's fun. Um, we've been offering tutoring during the summer. We offer tutoring with the Stockbridge in Rochester. Um, so far this year, we've done some tutoring in Rochester. Uh, a lot of kids have been involved with that, and most of our tutors are school day teachers. 
Uh, we do have a couple of paraeducators too that have been tutoring. And then I just want to mention our free reduced lunch rates. Um, this fluctuates a lot, but what you want to see is that the kids participating in our program, that free reduced lunch rate matches the school-wide rate. You don't want to see that, you know, we only have 15% of our kids qualify for free reduced lunch, but, you know, 50% of the school. So right at the moment, 70% um, of our participants in Rochester qualify for free reduced and 40% percent in Stockbridge and I'm thinking that's pretty on par with our mm -hmm. school wide rates. And that's it. The only other thing I wanted to say and I know this on uh, is on Bonnie's radar just, um, you know as you go through the building committee work um, and we you know think about rearranging kids and spaces and um, just to keep in mind one planet, I mean I always advocate for the best spaces available for those kids. Um, after a long day of, I mean, I always think about it as like, what do I want to do when I get home from work? Well, I want to put on my sweatpants and my sweatshirt and want to go lay on the couch. <laughs> That's what those kids want to do too. They want a soft, warm, comfortable, welcoming space. Um, so that's, you know, basically what, what we're hoping for. Um, that's it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, is the busing like when they go to swimming? Is that in your budget? You did budget for all that as well, or is that in your participation? Yeah, no, all the busing is part of. You mean for summer? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And are all the kids together in the summer? Yes, we brought them. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And so, where do they go? Um, for swimming lessons or for for their daily programs. <coughs> Yep. So, um, Rochester kids can be dropped off here and then they're bus to Stockbridge. Okay. Stockbridge, uh, we use the main multi purpose room space and we usually have two other classrooms that we have access to. So, we kind of spread the kids out there. And then every week we have a field trip. So, they go to different, they go to the Killington Adventure Center and Silver Lake and UDC. And, and that's all, and all of that busing is not in the regular budget. That's in your budget. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, one planet. Wow. Yeah, it, summers. <coughs> it's hugely expensive, but it, and I, I think it's also hugely important. Oh, I'd like to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, thank you very much uh, for all your hard work and all the ways you're engaging your kids. <laughs> thank you. Put your kids to bed, Carrie. Put your kids to bed. Yes. <laughs> Do we get all right? So, in full disclosure, no one has seen this. Oh, I see. No one, including the principal. Oh boy! Because I finished it at a little after six tonight. So this is truly raw draft one. Two more texts. Here, sir. <laughs> it's a bunch of copies. It's a little oh, wet over here. Meet my oh. <laughs> Do you want me to pass them down or did they go? We already got them. Thank you. Okay. You want one of these sheets? One of the packet and one of the sheets. Yeah. All right. So first draft of the budget represents a 3% increase in salaries as a placeholder in the, until negotiations are done, a 12.7% increase in the health insurance, and at a recent meeting with the Vermont Association of School Business Officials, VHI shared with us that the De Department of Financial Regulation has requested a re-review of the rates that they filed. So there is a potential that those rates could go up yet again. Um, so we do not have the finalized rates yet at this point. That's the 12.7? Yeah. Okay. And that was a, that's an average. I would highly doubt that they would I'm just trying to down. be optimistic. Yeah. <laughs> you are welcome to be as optimistic as you would like. Uh, the 12.7 was the average, depending on what plan they were on. One went up 14%, one went up 12.9%. So that's... Is that the largest increase yet? Oh, yeah. 
I no. don't think so. Well, I'm not totally up to speed on Beehive, but I know it's up there. in my prior career Maybe as a commercial highest. insurance agent, I saw much larger health insurance rates in the open marketplace, particularly in New Hampshire. Um, there is a 65% funding on the HRA total exposure. Um, so where is speaking up just a little bit? Sure. Thanks. A six, it, did you get the first page? Because I'm reading right off my sheet too, so that you can, this one here. Did you get this page of the notes? Thank you. It's right here. Thanks, Lofty. <coughs> so um, when I went to a state meeting with the auditing firm, who happens to also be our auditing firm, um, and talking with other business managers throughout the state of Vermont, um, several of us all had the same challenge in our budgets when the HRAs were initially put in place that it was post budget cycles being done and just basically under budgeting for HRAs. So the recommendation at that point was to do a minimum of 65%, but obviously you as a board can decide what you want to do and what you don't want to do. There are some districts in the state who budgeted for 100% of the HRA funding and have created a special reserve fund for HRAs so that as they build that account up and they get a better historical understanding of their utilization that they can change their budgets higher or lower if necessary. As of December, we were projecting between a 43 and a 45% utilization rate in our HRAs. Um, that, like I said, that was just through December, so that will change based on the year-end results and what's been submitted. And there's generally a one to two month lag in claim processing between the carriers and the HRA. So we use 65% as a budgeting factor. I updated the tuition expenditures to reflect the FY21 announced tuition rates if I had them. So Rochester has, according to my sheet, which may be off one or two students, Rochester has five 12th graders, and you have eight 6th graders. This so is you, for FY21, so that's yeah. this year's juniors and this year's 7th graders. No, that would be this, this year's, year's seniors, seniors and this year's 6th graders. And okay. this year's 6th graders, who will then transition out. Your seniors will transition out at the end of this fiscal year, yeah. and your 6th graders will go into your tuitioning pool. Oh, I see. So there's, okay, I see what you're yep. point getting to. Yep. Yep. So there's three additional students. So I put one in private and two in public at the highest rate for um, placeholders in the budget. And Stockbridge had three 12th graders and six 6th graders. So I did the same there. I added three students to the current tuition, one in private and two at public at the highest rate. Thanks. So with those changes and then what the administration put into the budget for their request, this budget draft is a budget of $4,657,214, which represents an increase of $248,652, or 5.64%. This puts your per pupil spending at $22,949.08 which is over the threshold of $18,756. In order to get you under the threshold, you will either need to add revenue or cut expenditures, and it can obviously be a combination of the two, $327,397.41. So some points I want to point out in the budget, revenue budget. So if you go to page 10 of the book, or close to the end, second to last page. Yep. Looks like this. Got the red line? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Red line. The one that doesn't have a, a surplus. So yes, we did not put any surplus in there, because you will need to instruct me if you wish to do that. And I would, in hopes, thank you, Amy, so very, very much for getting involved today because we couldn't get the audit finalized until we got the information that you provided. Oh, I have been yay, unable to Amy. get it for months, and the town treasurers have been unable to get it for months. So by you doing what you did today, I got those out to the auditors, and they needed to So we were missing the bank statements for the three special funds, therefore they couldn't wrap up your 
fund it has balances. Taken, it has taken many, many months to get it switched over from the old people's names, the old treasurer, the old principal, over to the <coughs> new, and, and I've just been persistent and been on it, and yep. so. so your work definitely paid off today. So my conversation at the end of the day today with the auditors is that they will get the final stuff wrapped up and I should start seeing reports over the next two days. So as soon as I get that, I can give you your additional information that you've requested in your email, your fund balances, where you ended for FY19, and we right. can get that stuff wrapped up. So in draft two, if you would like, we can add in revenue from any surplus that you have. And there's some changes um, that, Lindy, I will leave for you to also talk about that we need to do in this budget, particularly the farm to school money, mm -hmm. because we have to be able to sustain that locally. Um, but some of the other things that one thing we added this year that I didn't see in your budget last year, and so I'm hoping particularly those of you who have been on the board or been involved in the school for a long time may know. Both Rochester and Stockbridge are recipients of the Green Mountain Forest Grant money. Mm -hmm. So when I talked to Dan at the Treasury this morning, he confirmed that you know they haven't got the numbers yet, but based on trend that we should project a 20% decrease in the amount. So I've added that into your budget here. That's that $6,099 on the revenue side. I don't know historically if you've kept that in-house or if you've given that to your towns. We kept it in-house. Okay, so it wasn't in there before, so it's in there now. Okay. Um, at the six thousand ninety-nine dollars. So this is okay. a grant that was given. It it's, is given to the school, but you're saying the school could choose. Just choose, and sometimes like some other districts who oh, get it gave it to their town to maintain roads. Because and it was a specific thing yep. that the town was doing that this yep. could apply to. Yeah. So, but last year they decided to keep the money themselves too to help mm -hmm. offset their taxes. So I put that in there this year. And the $9,000 on the trustee trust fund, trustees of public fund, I believe that only represents the Stockbridge side. Correct. So if you're going to go... That's been, a, that's, that's, yes. that's been an and annual thing. Disbursement from funds of the trustees of public funds, the, 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 the funds were, were given directly to the school district. And so they, they manage the funds and they disperse, yeah. uh, they, they disperse a payment to us. As, as I understand it now, there is not a Rochester-specific trustee of public funds for education, though the Rochester trustees of public funds in the past have given money to the school. That's yep, correct, right? Um, yes, so uh, Bonnie and I actually sat in uh, on a meeting with the trustees of public funds. Um, we were uh, hoping that maybe they would be here tonight, but I think we'll um, reach out to them maybe at the uh, as well, but um, so if they will give you funds, we can also add that in here as local revenue to help offset some of this. So right. just keep me posted as far as what you find out on that side okay. of things. Um, and then tuition for what you're receiving, I updated that based on current enrollment that you're getting um, tuition receivables on, and I just bumped up the tuition rate for your announced tuition rate. So that was a small increase there. But okay. obviously if there's a decrease or increase in the kiddos <coughs> you're receiving in for tuition, that can change that number. And then the rest of it is the wonderfulness of your tax rates and how that all breaks down. So a couple of things that um, Lindy, you had asked me about. Right. Um, yes, and yes, I filled in all those things for you. And then, um, no, she, it's an email that she sent me that I didn't respond to. Because we were emailing that, like, <laughs> I was with the safety auditor. Right. And she was on the budget. So yeah. We so I will let Bonnie and Lindy speak to this because I was unable to attend um, the. Rochester Stockbridge was awarded um, the Farm to School Grant. They're my only district within our supervisory union who were awarded. So that's very exciting. And they went to a day-long training last week. So I'll let you guys talk about what we need to do because that is not currently allocated for right. in here. So we were awarded $20,000 for Farm to School. Nice. It was the most that any any school got, right? Right, the most that any school has gotten or school district has gotten ever. And so um, we will get 
30% of that to get things started this spring. It comes in increments. So 30% of the, am I right? 30% of the, <laughs> she's the numbers person. I know, I knew that's why you were doing it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, will come before this fiscal year closes. So we'll have to start the process. But one of the key pieces is about how we're gonna sustain this. And one of the ways we have talked about it is um, in working with the current um, Stockbridge physical education team, <coughs> which is point four, but using some other days and building her into the food service budget. So she would offset, she would work with both um, lunch ladies on nutrition planning and making sure we're procuring the right local foods and they're being put into the lunch menus as well as educating kids on nutrition and healthier choices and healthier options. Um, so we talked about that being like a day that she would do that with both Julie and Pam and then a day where she's working in the classrooms with kids on cooking and recipes and nutrition. Does she have a, a history of? She of has a strong health and nutrition background. It's something um, that she's very strong. So we'd be, we'd, we'd be using this the part of this grant to maybe what we're we talking about increasing her FTE or we're we talking about a one time training? It would have to, you have to sustain it, so it can't be a one time. Okay, that's what that, that, that's what I was trying right. To and then using her also to, I mean, the, just the paperwork and the implementation piece can take some time. Okay. Um, so, one way Tara recommended is that we look to um, add that into our food service. And you don't vote on your food service budget. That's a separate budget all on its own that doesn't go into your general fund. That's all maintained through the enterprise fund. You do, however, allocate funds from your general fund into your food service program. I think it was $28,000 per campus on the last fiscal year, so I just copied that over to this fiscal year. So you can... You can specifically, we should specifically identify what you want those funds to be utilized for. My understanding is historically it's been to help offset salaries and benefits of your food service personnel within the food service fund. So that is, you know, you can increase that transfer over or you can specifically allocate that money to go towards this program. But it's one of the placeholders that we could put it into the budget. I just don't have any concept of the dollar amount. Lindsay, do you have so any? Ever had a chance to even look at what we would need to use for funds to stabilize that and sustain that program? So with this grant, uh, the, to, to sustain it, they're looking for how personnel can sustain it, or they're looking at how we can continue to provide um, farm to, to school both. foods? It's both. Okay, so it is the actual purchase of foods of how going forward after this grant we are going to be able to continue to purchase uh, farm to school food. Right, and someone that oversees that. Yeah. So okay. They, they'd like to see it. This is the money get into your budget that would sustain it after the going forward once done. the money's right. right. So by setting up a system now is what they're saying. Use this money to set up your system, including buying food and and and. One of the one of the we'll use six thousand dollars on it, right? Thirty percent, she said. Yeah, we get three payments of six, and then the fourth payment would round off whatever the rest is. Two. Um, we one of the things we want to do is um, build, uh, identify, build, and be able to sustain a network of local providers. And one of the exciting pieces about the brand is that um, we get to decide how to define local. If we had to define it just in the Rochester Stockbridge communities there probably aren't enough providers for us to do that with. So the grant recipients um, staying sort of sort of true to their to their value statement identify what is local. So one of the first things we need to do is tap into some expertise and there's a fair amount of expertise that comes with this grant to figure out where are the <coughs> providers in the state of Vermont in our area that we can access. And one of the things they're encouraging us to do, one of the things they're encouraging us to do is to look for providers that we get into a commitment with. So for a small farmer to grow an extra, for him or her to grow an extra, I think potatoes we used as an example, 100 bushels of potatoes. That's a that's kind of an iffy expense for them if they don't have someone on the other end that they know they're going to be able to sell that to. 
So we would be hoping to establish this network where we say, okay, if you let our youngsters come to your farm and help you put these potatoes in and come back in the fall and harvest them, we'll buy that 100 bushel of potatoes from you. That's the kind of relationships that we're hoping, um, that we're hoping to be able to set up. And then the other key piece that Lindy spoke about is to have someone back at the school who's helping maximize the benefit of that local food that's coming in. Teaching youngsters why it's healthier to choose A than B. Helping youngsters make recipes. Running some, uh, one of the things that's coming out in the, in the farm to school uh, sort of historical look is that uh, families oftentimes need help learning how to cook local foods. It's not something they've done a lot with. It's not something they have a lot of experience with. So we're hoping to reach out to the families of our youngsters to do some, some, uh, uh, some activities there. You might want to reach out to uh, Deborah Aldridge. You work with her a little bit um, because she did, she does some things with the food shelf and you guys, this kids have made some, it's Aldridge, A-L-D-R-I-C-H, Deborah. And um, she has done and written grants for and done this with the food shelf. Um, she's organized it with Willie, who I hear is Walker. leaving. Um, but she has a whole network from Barnard to White River Junction to Lebanon that she orders and, and does that with the local economy. She also wrote a grant where 12 families got a food processor and every Sunday she had recipes and they came together and cooked and did it. So she could be a, a valuable resource. The other connection we're fortunate in making is um, a lot of school gardens, school local produce initiatives sort of aren't successful because there's no one in the summer to, to maintain the garden. And one of the connections we want to make is with Carrie and the One Planet, because those youngsters are right there at Stockbridge. Right. And to set up sort of a th summer gardening experience um, is, is, is a win on both sides. Yeah, Do we, we, we've done it in Stockbridge uh, off of Donna Gallant. That's where had a lot of problems with that with uh, Betsy Shands as well. Um, what, Carl, can can we, has a question, Carl. Do we have any sense of the schools, how much hamburger, how many potatoes per year? So that I could, because my brother has a big network of farmers, meat producers um, right. all around the state. And he's talked before that he single-handedly probably wouldn't be able to ta handle the amount of hamburger you call up on. But if he was, if he knew what the total was, being able to pull it in from a network of farms, because um, there's a lot of there's a right. lot of producers right now of be, of beef and pork mm -hmm. in this in the in the state. But I think that's one of those things that part of the reason I am encouraging this position is because the work that it takes to reach out and document all of that and sustain it is above and beyond what it takes to preserve to make sure food is ready every day for kids yeah. to eat on time. And it's but they have a purchase. We probably have a purchase list, right, of what right, they Right, right. Like, we could do that, but in terms of making and man maintaining those connections uh -huh. and working with that, it, I think it takes more than the staffing we have right now mm -hmm. right. to so, sustain effectively. So gotcha. if, it's, if it's an ongoing process, oh, we're adding how much FTE? What are you talking about? Probably. Yeah, do you think this is going to be a day a week, a half day a week? And is this just in the thought stage? It is in the thought stage. I mean, we just okay. barely came back from this meeting, so we're trying to sort Still, it. Okay, so and maybe we understand we have to come up with this. So we should leave you alone quickly. for a little longer. Right, yes. so, so let you guys boil a little bit more. Okay. Um, but it's more very good budget? News. Yeah, it is very good news. So uh, just to confirm all this, Tara, what you said went by me a little quickly. Um, we are currently over the threshold, is that yes. correct? Okay, so, and, and you said we have to, and I'm just not sure, looking at this, which number tells us how much we are over and how much uh, we have to either the, cut or raise. very bottom line on this sheet. So that little you, tan line on the sheet. Ethan, so we're over by, is Ethan, that per student or is that? If you look, this is the number, if you look at my single sheet, that last line, the 327, 397, 41, a, com a, com a combination of either adding additional revenue or cutting expenditures will be what we need to so cut. So that's pretty significant. To get below the threshold. So we've got a problem. 
But it's also your first one. Right. Yeah, fair enough. Well, it's always over the first one. I just one. try right. to get we're the clear picture. We're missing a lot. We're yeah. missing, yeah. Is this like, I mean, is this like a normal over? Yeah, it can be, especially when there's not, there's not an identified de deficit. And we've been told repeatedly that we have a surplus of hundreds of thousands of dollars. The question that we've had is that, is that surplus of hundreds of thousands of dollars actually funds that have never been spent but were allocated into special accounts, like the special account at Stockbridge for uh, uh, building repairs, the special account at, at, for educational purposes at Rochester. So because we don't want to count those as surplus funds and then right. turn around and find out that, oh no, because of crummy accounting in, in previous iterations of our business office, we actually just spent the, we just actually spent the college fund very, on a vacation. Very colorful. <laughs> So you're I mean, saying, that's, so that's, that, Carl, did you just say for public comment that somebody just spent um, on a vacation <laughs> for a college fund? Well, no, I say we don't want to spend the college fund on a vacation. I just so, want to make sure we get our, our you know, It has always been very straight. helpful. So, we wait, but looking. can we, that figure, do we know what that surplus figure is? I don't. That's what I'm okay. waiting. Because what, 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 what Amy what, gave us today is what we needed to get Rochester Stockbridge FY19 audits Done. Right. They wouldn't same. release any of the fund balances to me until they had those banks. So even tomorrow you might have something, or how soon? Do you so, but that's what that doing. number, do we know that that big number that may or may not have included special uh, or reserve funds? Do we know if that big number was accurate? I do not believe it was accurate, but I have not received any physical documentation to verify that. Okay. Because that didn't include the SU deficit assessment that had to be done. That did not include the Fund 12 cleanup that needed to be done, which is the bill back fund from the SU for the shared positions within the supervisory union. So all of that had to have been done after that December number. So a lot of that, released. so a lot of that, that uh, SU audit report was just inaccurate. There was things in there that were not done, which is why I kept saying. I am not comfortable with these numbers, and uh -huh. I okay. am not verifying these numbers until I physically have documentation and verification okay. that they're accurate. Okay. I mean, the, the the big thing is is we've been we've been told we had a, 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 a decently large Size surplus, surplus. But, yeah. um, and I want to know where we think that surplus because you're predicting three hundred and twenty twenty eight thousand dollars that that we need to get to get to get under the penalty. Um, and there's this thought that I have is that, well, we have this surplus that we've been told we have, we have, we have. Where do we think that is? Do we think that that's going to cover? I do not think it's that large. Yeah. Okay, do we think it's half of that? But, but here's the thing, I mean, we're talking, this is a I'm budget. I'm not getting back into a corner parlor, I'm sorry. No, I'm but the, no, 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 I, I, I don't think, I mean, I think responsibly, we shouldn't necessarily be looking for a bailout from a possible you know, bonus somewhere along the line. This is our budget, these are the numbers, right? Shouldn't we be going ahead as if but this is the numbers we have to deal with? Do, where do, we still need to see where we ended last year to be Correct. able to know as we're proposing this amount for this year, Okay. is that a lot more, is it, you know, is that, do we only use a very small amount and what we're budgeting is a very big amount? Okay. You know, what would we so actually we use okay. on that Fair line enough. item? And is that, when would we have that? For FY20? You're talking about right now? No, no. No, no, we'll get, oh, we'll get FY18. For 18. 19. 19. 19, 19. 19, yeah. 19. That, what, as of this afternoon, they told me I'd start getting reports within tomorrow and the day after. Okay, so and then you load that then into. I will, then I'll send it to you. And you as a board, I don't make that decision. You as a board have to decide if you want to utilize those surplus funds. No, I understand that. I was, well, I'm more looking at the actual other column that shows me my proposed uh, 19 and then my actual 19. Those columns are extremely and helpful once, when looking at. And once we have the actual 19, right. Lindy and I will be able to go through and adjust. And adjust where you. The where we're caution I'm going to give the board is that we have to be, and I don't know what that surplus number is going to be. We have to be very, very careful about using surplus funds because all that does is kick the can. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. That's exactly it's my concern. concern. It, 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 exactly. And you're using a number that is two years old. Right. Right. Regardless that the number is only released right mm -hmm. now, it is based on budgeting and factors that are two years old. Right. And at the very beginning of 
every single audit, and this is what the auditors are saying is wrong with the statute and why it impacts every district throughout the entire state who utilize these surplus funds. The very first step in every audit at the beginning, at the end of every fiscal year, is to review and restate your prior year AP, which is accounts payable, and your prior year accounts receivable. That one process alone impacts what those surplus or deficit funds were that you then allocated and potentially end up harming yourself if you utilize full funds that potentially may not have been available to use to begin right. with. I think that's exactly. the question about this. Well, that's the second, that's the, the, the second uh, problem is because right. we're, we're still sorting out where, where our reserve funds are. Right. But one of the rules of thumb that Oh, I don't remember which business manager said a long time ago, back when we were Windsor Northwest. But when you're looking at when you're looking at a budget gap of of uh, you know a quarter million dollars, that's when you start cutting people. And right now, we're looking at a, we're looking well, at a budget gap of a quarter million dollars, and we're looking. Do we so that do means we know? I think for the SU budget, you started to give us some areas of where this came from. This extra amount of money that you know over what we is it. A huge you know, what's factor going up? Is it all health care? Is it all health care? Was the HRA yeah, not being what? appropriately budgeted for? Can we gotcha. get a summary from just a brief summary from Lindy and Bonnie of kind of the direction you gave of different areas that may have changed, increased, or decreased? We we can give you that, Jenny, but we've just seen it tonight for the first time. Oh, like okay. Okay. Are. So okay. I think I think I think the caution well, is it's the first draft. We don't tell people to ask for the minimum. Right now, we tell them right. to ask for yeah. every single thing they think they're going to need, and now it's at a different right. point. Gotcha. So, so um, just looking at this, I mean, so you guys need to review it. Yeah, right. And I mean, this then is we need to be raw. The, the so audited right. numbers gotcha. in from 19, so, and then we need to meet again. So, and I don't want to be, I don't want to be overly optimistic. I don't want to be overly pessimistic. But the HRA statewide are causing huge difficulties with school budgets. In a number of districts, it is costing them positions. So and that's just the reality. Going forward, if these HRAs are going to maintain, they would are. we be would it be more um, equalized in next year because we're used to it and we would know what I it mean, was? I mean, as a board, that's a decision you have to make, is how much each year you want to fund for these HRAs. And as you get more years under your belt, you, get you can more reliable see more data of how much people yeah. are using it. Yeah. The problem yeah. with the HRAs was that we did not settle the teacher's contract until after you passed the budget. So we couldn't, we couldn't know exactly what we were going to have to budget in that because it wasn't, it wasn't until later in the year that you mm -hmm. that I we think knew. one of my, my biggest things I've learned about that being on the school board is how much speculation is involved in this right. process. Right. It's incredible. It is gambling, and it really is to some it's level. It's really trying to take the, the best, best information guess. you have yep. at a snapshot in time yep. and projecting from there. And there are so many factors yep. that yep. get no, thrown I, it's, into it's, the wrench that can it totally is a, derail a situation and totally derail a budget. I mean, it's just <clears throat> in the statewide negotiations for the health care, I mean, that we are now moving forward. Whatever happens there is what we get. Like, there is no give or take from that. We are mandated to use the same that was determined by the state. The, the point I'm trying to make is there's no way you could have been prepared. Right. No, 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 that's fine. This. I'm just... No way. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm a little more aware than I was it's last year about the budget. The last <laughs> it's just sort of... It's, to them actual historical, historical can we set a meeting for yeah. after you guys have had a chance to yeah, look one, at this? How soon do you think draft? you'd be able to get us, get us some feedback? Well, we're going to need the audit from... Tomorrow uh, morning? Yeah. <laughs> 7 a.m. Yeah, 7 a.m. I can be here. <laughs> As soon as we can get the audit, we'll leave the lights on for you. Yeah, we'll <laughs> Actually, we won't because that costs money. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the other thing is we can we, we can sort of take a little breath here because we are a ways out yeah, yeah, yeah. from our deadline. So I'd rather take a little more time and have us get oh, yeah. numbers. No, I'm, I'm totally, whatever you need, I'm just. 
That's why I started with the disclaimer. This is a total raw right. yep. draft one. So can, the HRA is a health reimbursement account? Yes. And does... Right, so when, and I'm, I think you explained it once already, when we budget it, does it automatically fill the, that person's account? No. Okay. Because if you're only budgeting 65% of the total exposure, that's all you would be putting in I to that as a budget item. So if they are a professional staff, and my back's to you, I'm sorry. Per the, per the state contract, <laughs> it is $2,100 for a single right. and $4,200 for any other tier. So that's your employee plus spouse, employee plus children, or a family. Support staff get $2,200 for an individual and $4,400 for all other tiers of enrollment. So that is the exposure that has been agreed upon for FY21 at an 80-20 split, which we were already at as a supervisory union within our district, so that didn't impact us as it did for others, so we were lucky there. Um, but the difference with the HRA, you can prorate premium. You cannot prorate HRAs. So if they're only a half-time employee, they still get the full benefit. Sorry, can you say that That's again? It. Just so if right now, if you me. have a 0.5 employee, Mm -hmm. The premium share that you as a school board pay is reduced based on being a 0.5 employee. As opposed to a foot one You point. cannot do that with the HRA. So if, regardless if they're a 1.0, a 0.5, a 0.2, or a 0.3, they're getting that full funding amount wow. available to them to utilize for their claims. The first the split that we have right now is off the table. We fund it first dollar. So right now, the employee was paying 40%, the board was paying 60% up to the first $1,000, mm -hmm. and then the HRA would pay until the HRA was exhausted. That's gone. There is no longer that. So that additional money is the responsibility of the board from the get-go. So that also impacts the utilization and the funding into these HRAs. Wasn't there talk about and maybe I'm missing this, that, that there was just going to be one, one contract or one health care contract for everybody. That's what this is. That's just what it is. That okay. is what this is. So why are there separate negotiations? Is it separate negotiations for the salary and yeah, benefits? We still salary, salary, wording? Yes, we okay. still gotcha. as a Word supervisory union have That's to what do I'm, our own negotiations. And this is all new just in these last But health insurance months. is now no longer yep. on the table for negotiation. Gotcha. We okay. have to go The only thing we control is the percentage at which we fund it. No, that is also mandated by the state. 45, 45%? 80, 20. 60, 65%. Oh, what you do for the HRA. Yes, yeah, the HRA. That is your only the HRA, we can decide, because I remember there was that Right. right from Bethel, right, but we, saying, if we, if we let's cut it down to 45. Yes, I had some right. districts that decided not to utilize the 65%, and because of their budget constraints, they did drop down to 45. I had another one that dropped down to 50, but knowing that there is a can potential. We, can we actually that, see maybe when we come back to Thanksgiving what those numbers That's were? what happens next. Yeah. Bonnie and Lindy yeah. review. They decide what they can live without, mm -hmm. and you as a board now have to give us directive as to what your expectations are. Mm -hmm. right, to be careful these are decisions that. I don't make for you. This gotcha. is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I understand. I understand. You as a board with your administration need to decide what you want, and then you tell me and I just run the numbers. Right, cool. But, you know, it, both professional development and HRAs, they're, you know, you, it's, it's a benefit. You can get up to a cap. And if we wanted to be completely fiscally prudent, we'd always say we're going to fund that 100% because that's our full exposure. Yeah. But no one, you know, not everyone takes their full their, their, their full professional development. So you kind of throw some money in there based on historical performance yep. and then and, and hope it works out. And we're pretty good at we, We've done that with professional development for a long time. We have a fairly good idea of what the staff takes on that. But, but the HRA, HRA is we're not really sure at all. Yep. Yep. And we yep. literally yep. only have a year and a half of utilization. That's gotcha. really because of everything that happened that first year between future planning and data path. You pretty much can disregard utilization for FY18 because it was not accurate. Mm -hmm. So you really have FY19, eight months or maybe 10 months out of that that could be legit based on all the transfer 
and then what happens in FY20. So we're just starting to be able to, to see some utilization trending. Okay. If you, if you fund it at a higher rate and you don't get up to that rate, you can use those savings reduce to reduce it in the future. So well, that, that's, that's a great thing I remember from the SU meeting was that it does carry over. Yeah. Which is really useful. Yeah, and you just and, it's and very creating handy. whatever you know, we don't spend. It, yeah, goes you on. know what you've got in there and versus what you need to budget for in the future. So it automatically <coughs> carries over. It doesn't go as part of our fund balance that we decide Correct. what to do with. You right now it ends up in your general fund. Okay. And we would just track this is what we budgeted for and this is what you used. But, okay. You do have the option in what some other districts have and I say this with the disclaimer that Dina said we have to talk about this in more detail before we do this. There are some other districts who have gone to the extent of creating a special reserve fund for HRA. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so I thought it was so like a truck fund, you know, like you do in the town. Similar to what you do, it's it, rather than going to the voters and saying, I want to take $10,000 out of my FY19 surplus and put it to the building reserve fund. You literally just pull it out so it's tracked separately from your general fund. Okay. Yeah. So revenue and expenditures would just come right out of that one fund. So every year when we're budgeting money, it would come into that line item and every expenditure that's coming out would come right out of that line item. So it's truly tracked separately. Would you recommend that? I'm going to stick with Dina's recommendation that we need to have further conversation. It makes sense to me, yes, mm -hmm. but if there's legal ramifications around yeah, doing so, I need to know that before gotcha. I can come to you and say I think that this is what we need to do, gotcha. but know that it is a discussion that I have had and have listened to other business managers discuss. Because I, I, I'm sorry, I recalled that, it, that the HRA would be, would be handled kind of like the lunch fund or whatever. It's, where yeah, but it's not. It didn't happen. Didn't happen. It was supposed to be that way. It didn't um, happen. I don't know so why. It didn't happen. Just, to, just to tell you, Carl, we've been on this a half hour. In terms is, of what you knew I was going to be one. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Just want to keep you up to date. Well, okay, yes. Bonnie was just um, a yeah. No, 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 no just meeting. to let you know. I'm In terms of a meeting, I'm, I'm going to make a suggestion that maybe we, we watch our emails closely and, and work with our calendars to understand this is a priority because. I don't want to set a meeting now and have these reports come sooner so that we could set the meeting sooner or have them come later and us not be ready for the date yep. we set. So yep. I'm going to suggest that you kind of stay on your emails, watch them closely, and as soon as we can get the reports and, and Tara authorizes them to us, then Lindy and I can start looking at different line items in this budget. I don't I don't want to be the, the, the gloom and doom person, but it is, it is unlikely we will get to a Three hundred thousand dollar mark without some sort of structural change. Yeah, and I have no idea what that might. Do be you about. need some instruction as to that tonight? Probably <laughs> not, because I don't know the scope of it. Okay. Once, I, once we know gotcha. the scope of it, then it will be more realistic to ask for that. Because right now we're just going to be grabbing yeah. from here. And there. <laughs> I do know that Lindy and I didn't put enough money into this budget to to uh, get to that number with any great ease. It's going to take some, yeah. like I say, some structural reorganization okay. of something. Uh, two things. One, I think possibly for our pie chart, that HRA might be a really nice uh, thing for people to be able to see. H how much of the total benefit package is the HRA or how what? much of the I'm not sure how many pie charts you're doing and, and maybe it's some further well, it's discussion one of the, but yeah it is one of the discussion items is if, how many if you right because if we we're how looking at the as budget? the total budget how much how of it much is our HRA I, I think that's okay you got know. you got you how much which is D different from health insurance oh, so totally. there's there's it's kind of like a, a slice of the pie that's similar yeah. but different you know it's still well as of the, right now yeah at the 65 percent funding the hra is sixty four thousand eight hundred and five dollars sixty four thousand and is that somewhere in the budget it's I just rolled up the object code 211 to give you that number. She, she's sorry, because I didn't. It was in her spreadsheet that she has on her I computer. Just got you. Got you. Okay. Only I filtered just for that code to give you that number. Right, because no. like uh, the, the guidance, the guidance council of HRA entry is, is special under the guidance session. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, Teachers yeah, yeah, are yeah. under regular ed. Blah, got blah, you. Blah. Got you. 
that's broken out, your budget is broken out by function, and then each object code is under each budget function. Object code, sorry? That's the three-digit code that's when you're looking at your sheet, that 101 is salaries, 102 11 is teacher salaries. I'm going to do it all this stuff. Look at your coding. I know. Your blue one. Yeah, no. I Stapled one. Right. That yeah. one. It's just so the, when you're looking at that, the function, you'll see that very look top at the front one page. Thank you. is 1100. That's the function. That function Thank you. This is, is a very good definition. And then each code underneath it is the object that supports that function. Huh. So your salaries, your benefits, your supplies, your books. Yep. Each yep. of those numbers. Those are all the numbers that I get to change as of 7-1 courtesy of the state of Vermont's Universal Chart of Accounts. Okay. Nice. Object and function. Great. Um, before we put this uh, discussion to bed, when do we think, just for just for general planning sense, so you think, you think you're getting something in the next day or two? So they tell me. So we're thinking the end of the <laughs> week, and you're going to think about a, a right. week, so we should be thinking about the end of the month. Does that run into, hmm. does that run into that we our sub? So, our sub uh, February break? Yep. Yep. And also. Well, they do it before that, right? Yes, I would hope that we'd be able to do it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and also, our <laughs> next meeting, we need to change because it's on town meeting day. And we're, I mean, we can have it, but with Tara, we will not be able to be here, right? Because you're going to be at other town meetings. My town meetings are in the afternoon and usually done by 6.30. Okay. So a nice long day. You don't mind coming to a... <laughs> I do 16 Kay. to 18 hour days right now anyways. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know. When is Stockbridge's town meeting? In the morning. In the morning. Okay. Oh, Rochester's, though, is in the evening, right? I don't know what Rochester's. Mine are all the night before. I have three the night before. Ours might be the one on night before. I don't have this year's book. Um, looks like it, 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 it's on Monday. Monday at 7 p.m. So okay, never mind then. If everybody's cool with that. So we're looking at the eight, the week the week of the 18th, hopefully. The week of the 17th of February, yeah, somewhere in there. Hopefully by then. Maybe the 19th is looking like the best. The Thursday. This and Wednesday. Wednesday. Um, all right, so budget. Like the 500. What's that? Anybody else tell manager wise? Um, your current bonds. Okay. Are done. Okay. So there's a grouping of one, ten. Yes. Okay. I'm sure that Tara can tell us because that would be very useful to know a code that you could even color code. Cool. This is why I'm sort of hoping yep. to see if I can do the whole thing. Yep. Then you can All right. Um, you have a question? Sure. Yeah, just to, you know, under operation of building and so on, when it comes to like 610 and 733, uh, when it's the general supplies and furniture and fixtures. Mason, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble. Oh, what uh, function code are we starting with? 2610 on page 811. 2610. Operational building 610 and 733. And determining that, is that based on an inventory of what we own? Sorry, 733, you said furniture and fixtures. That's if stuff needs to be replaced for furniture and fixtures. That's normally what drives that number. Replacements. Well, I'm just curious at what point do we maintain an inventory list so we know? Yes, we have a fixed asset list. We have to import it every year with our audit. Oh, what was missing? That's one of the Expensive trimmer right there. <laughs> <laughs> Part of your office. Uh, I, I just noticed that, you know, I don't know, I remember the whole thing. Increase. I'd uh, definitely look forward to seeing the audited numbers of what we did in 2019 for replacement, how much we cost of replacing fixtures and furniture. Well, those are hard to fix. I mean, like uh, uh, the, on grounds, you know, we have repairs and maintenance. Uh, Four thousand and what, nothing for the next budget. I mean, are the building separate from the landscaping issues. Mason, that was a, most of that was an old code from the um, 
Rochester High School, when you had to maintain the baseball fields, the soccer fields, they had to be lined, they had to be mowed, they had to be all that, all that stuff, and that's just gone. We don't have high school fields that we need to maintain anymore. And at some point, a, a previous board um, had asked to have that, that cost broken out. What was it costing to maintain the high school fields? So like of the ownership of the marquee, we could uh, put that on eBay and recuperate, maybe buy a couple of fixtures for the lead problem. There you go. I mean, what do we own that we can get rid of? <laughs> you, Mason, you. Yeah, me. <laughs> <laughs> well, the public audits have, have at least rolled up the list. I don't believe they have the individual. You've got uh, 67 mice, 43 keyboards, two ergonomic <laughs> keyboards. You know, an old Betamax player, but there, there is, there is at least a, a, a general thing, and I believe you roll that up from some sort of asset list. Yes, it's main, yeah, we maintain the full box. So there's, there's, there, there's, there's a, a fuller list we could probably get our hands on. If you uh, send us an email, we can see what we can do about that. Um, all right, uh, principal's report. Well, all right, uh, exciting things. Farm to school, which we've already talked about. Um, Lead testing, that was fun. Uh, what we found in Stockbridge is it was all the same type of fixture, meaning literally all those automated hand washers that you see in the restrooms, like the staff, staff restroom or the- The same, automated ones. The automated ones, it turned- what Those are like the new ones, right? Yeah, those are the new ones. It is, but they were not manufactured in a place that followed the lead. Oh. Is what we're nine They were the cheap ones. Sure. Uh, so we have a quote, we're moving forward that what we do know about this is you're supposed to save your receipts so you can get reimbursed for anything that hit as high. And then there's the custodial closet as well, the sink in there, which you've got a whole different conversation if you're filling up your water bottle in the custodial closet. <laughs> it's a little bit, you gotta have some fun with it. So that's where we're at, we have a quote when we're scheduling the work. So do, you need, do you need a motion from us to approve it? It's under the $5,000 So, But I didn't know if there just had to be something officially noted for the reimbursement or whatever. Uh, not that I saw this. in the paperwork. And a notification has gone home to parents as well in their state folders. And we specified specifically that which, found, uh, which uh, hand washing stations it was because I didn't want anybody to think it was the water fountain. Right. Just, there's um, more than one quote. It says a plumber has come and given us a quote. Does that mean there'll be other plumbers giving quotes? Uh, we did at the time this report was written. We weren't sure what the quote was going to come in at. If it was going to be over the five thousand dollar amount. What we have learned with our plumbers and electricians is some people, especially if they're local, are quicker to come and do the work than other people. So that's a bit of a factor too. Then support of the local. Right, yeah. And we basically follow the same procedure in terms of notifying parents, et cetera. Our results were a little different. It's a little more of a mi mixed bag. We had five locations that were above the four, uh, I learned a new term, PPB, parts per billion. Um, one uh, was a drinking fountain in the preschool room. So we automatically uh, shut that down the next day. And there's an alternative water source in there. Another one of ours is a drinking fountain over in the high school, in the part of the high school that we're no longer using. That's also shut down. Water's turned off and there's signage. Is it one of the new ones? It was one of the new ones. Um, hand washing sink in the art room, uh, which we've left water turned on to. No one drinks from there. We have to leave it on because it's the only sink to wash your hands after you use the bathroom. And um, then we have two other sinks Plumber's coming in, plumber came in last Thursday. We're still waiting for our quote to see what he's uh, guesstimating there. It appears as though we will completely replace the drinking fountain in the preschool room. Um, and then it looks to be like possibly faucet replacement for the sinks. Um, one of the good things about both schools is that we did, they, they do two draws. They do a first draw, which is uh, after you, uh, immediately when you turn the water on. Then they do a second draw, which is 30 seconds after the water has run. And the point of that is, the 30 second one, is you get a sense of is the problem further up in the system. And for all of ours, 
um, the water cleared significantly on the 32nd draw. So they believe most of the problem is in the faucets and the solder used to, I know nothing about plumbing, so I'm out of my element here. The solder used to put those faucets together. Um, so uh, we will retest once we have all these installed. Um, as Lindy said, the state pays up to a certain amount, so we'll process through that, make sure we get as much reimbursement as we can. Um, and then I said, like I said, there's a retesting process that we'll take on the on our five sites and your four sites, four sites. How's the roof? Sorry, Ethan. How's the roof? Uh, the roof seems to be so doing fine. Knock on wood. Um, I think plastic. Plastic. Oh, plastic. <laughs> plastic, sorry, knock on something. Um, but the roof is doing fine at this point. We haven't had any major leaks. We had one minor leak. Um, we believe we can continue to, to limp along with that. Okay, thank you. All right. And then the only other thing I would say is I spent my day with a representative from Visbit. And by my day, I mean my day. Um, <laughs> it's our insurance. Uh, they send a safety consultant around to do, uh, to check your anything and everything you can think of. Uh, what's an example? Is this just Dark Bridge or did this happen right just a, They come to, they're different sites. Coming, coming next week. Right. Right. I'm going to do better than Lindy on the test because I'm asking her the question before uh, you go. <laughs> 9 to 2.30 today. Um, but it was very informative. We went over any, like, safety concerns from exterior doors to shades to uh, recommendations to update to safety plans. Did you um, notice the push bars out of the multifunction room and that it needs to be replaced? Uh, that's not even high enough up on the list. Okay. I'm sure he did. I haven't seen his full report. We oh. talk about a lot and he takes a ton of notes. It's really informative. We can um, report out on it once we have it but it has to be done in an executive session because it's considered safety planning gotcha. and you don't want anybody to learn all your secrets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they can, so they yeah. can be safe. I mean, right. who would want that? Exactly. Well, and you had to keep a straight face while he said these well, things. I was wondering, should you be washing your hands in lead water? That's like, I, I don't know, but I am. I'll tell you, I'll tell you the honest truth, I am. Just FYI, Visbit is actually your insurance company. It's a Vermont School Board's Insurance Trust, ESBIT, and they come around and do these safety audits of schools to prevent anything they can prevent from occurring. If they can help us fix something that's got a potential liability so that liability never happens, you know, our insurance rates and there, likely stay down. There's grant money tied to it, so the advantage of doing it was that I kind of went in with some of my concerns and he actually brought them up before I could even get them off my plate. And if it's in his report, then there's some grant funds to support those changes. That's great. Thank this guy really has a good track record of being proactive. You know, they'd rather give us $1,000 to fix something before someone falls and gets injured and you're looking at a several thousand dollar I have a few rocks I have to make apparently right. they're too close to entryways. I did want to comment on um, the uh, performance that was here it's on your on your yes, list yeah. uh, I was here and it was uh, a really great performance with Rochester and Stockbridge uh, winter concert th that Mallory put on with the kids there was uh, singing there was a they did rock band they did um, bass guitar they um, did electric piano percussion instruments, percussion instruments. I saw the they, setup it was an amazing setup yeah, I had to leave setup. to go out of town but uh, it was an amazing setup I'd never seen a music concert set up quite like that before. It was great. I was either, I think it was Joanne, I was talking to somebody, I don't know if it was Joanne or somebody, but the kids were excited about, oh, I was talking with Joanne. One Stockford Jester and one Rochester Jester who who grown particularly close. Whenever we have these events, they're, all, they're together a lot. And they came up and they said, Mrs. Bourne, look, we look like a real band. <laughs> <laughs> and they did. It was quite an elaborate setup. Yeah, cool. it was really, really great. So I wanted to give a shout out to that. Yeah. All right, well, thank you. Okay, 9.1 annual report update. Uh, yes, we, uh, Jenny and I are making a good team, yeah. making a lot of progress on this. Uh, the main thing I wanted to bring up to you, um, and we are going to have color coding, but this is the main thing is the difference in price, and I got this from Penny today. I just sent it to you. But we're talking roughly, if it's 1,000 copies as it was last year, the difference of $1,488 was last year's black and white. $2,268 um, for four color. 
is that four pages in color? Uh, or, yeah. or what is that? I didn't understand what that meant. I don't know what 4-4 four, four is. Is that like four ink colors? Yeah, That's I think something I like that. Yeah, okay, four so it's colors. not just four pages yeah, in color. I think it meant it's the total thing. Well, there's, there's, so there, there, there's four color printing, which I think is, if it says four, four. This is okay. color, th color throughout. So right, it's right. Four, four color throughout. Right. That's that. That, that means that it's 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 not spot printing. Like you might use if you were, um, the, you you might use just a particular green for your logo and just have that be the only color. And that's a cheaper kind of color run than than a four color color run, which is what that is. Yeah. This four. is a four color color run. So I wanted to just give you the idea that what we're planning, which is definitely color, um, and I I have. We're going to get better at these uh, pie charts and putting them in. My computer sort of messed up today. Um, um, but also the graphics and the information. Um, but I wanted to make sure the board know that we were to do this the way we want to. We are spending um, 600, is it 600? You know, it's 700, almost 800, $800 more. So, so uh, uh, before I go any more, 80 cents more a book. Yeah. If before I go any further, I just want to get make sure that um, we're okay this is something that. we want to do. Well, I, some of your ideas are to do color pie charts. The, the color really pie charts. Also, the, the, what we're working right now is that there are eight colored sections, and literally one from the introduction to the warning is a different, and that comes in. They, they have a header on top of each page that's a different color, and then there's another header. Uh, it didn't. It, this it didn't what you come sent out. out right? I didn't get it. No, I have a couple. No, I didn't, didn't print out enough for everybody, it's but also if people wanted to just take. A this look. is also not as. Um, it's not anywhere close to It is broken up color wise, so, yes, but it gives yeah. you some idea. And I have, I have in oh, here. Oh, sec different sections, and the t each section is called the. I can pass along highlight. just the idea of the the map. And sections. The, yeah, I think, and I mean, we're just we're trying to get it. So, so much here, more informative this year. I just have, here, pass this along and just look at this. This is sort of a, a rough idea. I'm not crazy about the exact way we did the map. It is amazing to look at this SU on a map. And you realize it's three valleys with almost yeah, no way to get realizes. from one end of it to the other. Bruce, I don't know how face. you've done this. Yeah. I think I, we should not show a, a map to anybody who's applying. We still need to see where we ended last year. To be able to know, as we're proposing this amount for this year, okay, is that a lot more? Is it, you know, is that do we only use a very small amount, and what we're budgeting is a very big amount? Okay. You know, what would we so actually we use okay. on that Fair line enough. item, and is that when would we have that for FY twenty? You're talking about right now? No, no, no. no. We'll get, oh, we'll get FY18. For 18. 18. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. Yeah. As of this afternoon, they told me I'd start getting reports within tomorrow and the day after. Okay, so and then you load that then into... I will, then I'll send it to you. And you as a board, I don't make that decision. You as a board have to decide if you want to utilize those surplus funds. No, I understand that. I was, I'm more looking but, at the actual other column that shows me my proposed... Uh, 19 and then my actual 19. Those columns are extremely and helpful once, when looking at. And once we have the actual 19, right. Wendy and I will be able to go through and adjust. And adjust where you. The where caution I'm going to give the board is that we have to be, and I don't know what that surplus number is going to be. We have to be very, very careful about using surplus funds because all that does is kick the can. Yeah, exactly. Right. 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 Yeah. That's exactly it's my concern. It, it, exactly. It, it, exactly. And you're but, using a number that is. Two years old. Right. Right. Regardless that the number is only released right mm -hmm. now, it is based on budgeting and factors that are two years old. Right. And at the very beginning of every single audit, and this is what the auditors are saying is wrong with the statute and why it impacts every district throughout the entire state who utilize these surplus funds. The very first step in every audit at the beginning, at the end of every fiscal year, is to review and restate your. Uh, prior year AP, which is accounts payable, and your prior year accounts receivable. That one process alone impacts what those surplus or deficit funds were that you then allocated and potentially end up harming yourself if you utilize full funds that potentially may not have been available to use to begin right. with. I think that's the that, question about this. Well, that's the second, that's the, the, the second uh, problem is because right. We're, we're still sorting out where, where our reserve funds are. Right. But one of the rules of thumb that 
oh, I don't remember which business manager said <laughs> a long time ago, back when we were Windsor Northwest. But when you're looking at when you're looking at a budget gap of of uh, you know a quarter million dollars, that's when you start cutting people. And right now we're looking at a, well, we're looking at a budget gap of a quarter million dollars, and we're looking. Do we so that do means we know? I think for the SU budget, you started to give us some areas of where this came from. This extra amount of money that you know over what we is it. A huge you know, what's going up? Is it all health care? Is it all health care? Was the HRA yeah, not being what? appropriately budgeted for? Can we gotcha. get a summary from just a brief summary from Lindy and Bonnie of kind of the direction you gave of different areas that may have changed, increased, or decreased? We we can give you that, Jenny, but we've just seen it tonight for the first time. Oh, like okay. You folks are. So okay. I think I think I think the caution oh, is it's the first draft. We don't tell people to ask for the minimum. Right now, we tell right. them to ask for yeah. every single thing they think they're going to need, and now it's at a different right. point. Gotcha. So, so uh, right. just looking at this, I mean, so you guys need to review it. Yeah, right. And I mean, this then is we need to be raw. The, the right. audited right. numbers gotcha. in from 19, so. and then we need to meet again. So, and I don't want to be, I don't want to be overly optimistic. I don't want to be overly pessimistic. But the HRA statewide are causing huge difficulties with school budgets. Yes. And in a number of districts, it is costing them positions. So and that's just a reality. Going forward, if these HRAs are going to maintain, they would are. we be, would it be more um, equalized in next year because we're used to it and we would know what I it mean, was? As a board, that's a decision you have to make, is how much each year you want to fund for these HRAs. And as you get more years under your belt, you get you can more reliable see more data of how much people yeah. are using it. Yeah. The problem yeah. with the HRAs was that we did not settle the teacher's contract until after you passed the budget. So we couldn't we couldn't know exactly what we were going to have to budget in that because it wasn't it wasn't until later in the year that you. Mm -hmm. that I we think knew. one of my my biggest things I've learned about. The being on the school board is how much speculation is involved in this right. process. Right. It's mm -hmm. incredible. It is gambling, and it really is to some it's level. It's really trying to take the, the best, best information guess. you have yep. at a snapshot in time yep. and projecting from there. And there are so many factors yep. that yep. get no, thrown I, it's, into it's, the wrench that can. It totally is a derail a situation and totally derail a budget. I mean, it's just in the statewide negotiations for the health care. I mean, that we are now moving forward. Whatever happens there is what we get. And there is no give or take from that. We are mandated to use the same that was determined by the state. The, the point I'm trying to make is there's no way you could have been prepared. Right. No, 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 that's Prince. fine. I'm just, no way. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm a little more aware than I was last year about the budget. The last <laughs> it's just sort of, it's, can we set a meeting for yeah. after you guys have had a chance to yeah, look when, at this? How soon do you think draft? you'd be able to get us, get us some feedback? Well, we're going to need the audit from tomorrow morning. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 7 a.m. Yeah, 7 a.m. I can be here. <laughs> As soon as we can get the audit, we'll leave the lights on for you. Yeah, we'll <laughs> Actually, we won't because that costs money. Yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, the other thing is we can we we can sort of take a little breath here because we are a ways out yeah, from, yeah, yeah. from our deadline. So I'd rather take a little more time and have us get oh, your yeah, numbers. No, I'm totally whatever you need. I'm just. That's why I started with the disclaimer. This is a total raw right. yep. draft one. So can, the HRA is a health reimbursement account? Yes. And does, right, so when, and I'm, I think you explained it once already, when we budget it, does it automatically fill the, that person's account? No. Okay. Because if you're only budgeting 65% of the total exposure, that's all you would be putting in I to that as a budget item. So. If they are a professional staff, and my back to you, I'm sorry. It's per, this, per the state contract, <laughs> it is $2,100 for a single right. and $4,200 for any other tier. So that's your employee plus spouse, employee plus children, or a family. Support staff, 
get $2,200 for an individual and $4,400 for all other tiers of enrollment. So that is the exposure that has been agreed upon for FY21. At an 80-20 split, which we were already at as a supervisor union within our district, so that didn't impact us as it did for others, so we were lucky there. Um, but the difference with the HRA, you can prorate premium. You cannot prorate HRAs. So if they're only a half-time employee, they still get the full benefit. Sorry, can you say that That's again? It. Just so if right now, if you me. have a 0.5 employee, mm -hmm. there, the premium share that you as a school board pay is reduced based on being a 0.5 employee. As opposed to foot one You point. cannot do that with the HRA. So if, regardless if they're a 1.0, a 0.5, a 0.2, or a 0.3, they're getting that full funding amount wow. available to them to utilize for their claims. The first, the split that we have right now is off the table. We fund it first dollar. So right now, the employee was paying 40%, the board was paying 60% up to the first thousand dollars, and then the HRA would pay until the HRA was exhausted. That's gone. There is no longer that. So that additional money is the responsibility of the board from the get-go. So that also impacts the utilization and the funding into these HRAs. Wasn't there talk about, and maybe I'm missing this, that, that there was just going to be one, one contract or one health care contract for everybody? That's what this is. That's just what it is. That okay. is what this is. So why are there separate negotiations? Is it separate negotiations for the salary and yeah, benefits? We still salary as a, wording. Yes, we okay. still as a supervisory union have what to I'm, do our own negotiations. And this is all new just in this last But health insurance months. is now no longer yep. on the table for negotiation. Gotcha. We okay. have to go The only thing we control determined. is the percentage at which we fund it. No, that is also mandated by the state. 45, 45%? 80, 20. 60, 65%. Oh, what you do for the HRA. Yeah, yes, the HRA. That is your only control. The HRA, we can decide, because I remember there was that right. guy from Bethel right, but if we, saying, if we, if we let's cut it down to 45. Yes, I had some right. districts that decided not to utilize the 65%, and because of their budget constraints, they did drop down to 45. I had another one that dropped down to 50. But knowing that but there is a can we, can we actually yeah. see maybe when we come back to Absolutely. what those numbers that's were. what happens next yeah bonnie and lindy yeah. review they decide what they can live without mm -hmm. and you as a board now have to give us directive as to what your expectations are mm -hmm. right, to be careful these are decisions that. i don't make for you this gotcha. is true yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, i understand that you I understand. as a board with your administration need to decide what you want and then you tell me and i just run the numbers All right, cool but you know, it, both professional development and HRAs, they're, you know, you, it's, it's a benefit, you can get up to a cap. Mm -hmm. And if we wanted to be completely fiscally prudent, we'd always say, we're gonna fund that 100% because that's our full exposure. Yeah. But no one, you know, not everyone takes their full, their, their, their full professional development. So you kind of throw some money in there based on historical performance yep. and then and, and hope it works out. And we're pretty good at, we, we've done that with professional development for a long time. We have a fairly good idea of what the staff takes on that. But, but the HRA, HRA is very new. Really sure at all. Yep. Yep. And we yep. literally yep. only have a year and a half of utilization. That's gotcha. really because of everything that happened that first year between future planning and data path. You pretty much can disregard utilization for FY18 because it was not accurate. Mm -hmm. So you really have FY19, eight months or maybe 10 months out of that that could be legit based on all the transfer and then what happens in FY20. So we're just starting to be able to, to see some utilization trending. Okay. If you if you fund it at a higher rate and you don't get up to that rate, you can use those savings reduce to reduce it in the future. So well, that, that's, that's the great thing I remember from the SU meeting was that it does carry over. Yeah. Which is really useful. Yeah, and you just and, it's and very creating, handy. whatever you know, we don't spend. It, yeah, goes you on. know what you've got in there and versus what you need to budget for in the future. So it automatically <coughs> carries over. It doesn't go as part of our fund balance that we decide Correct. what to do with. You right now it ends up in your general fund. Okay. And we would just track this is what we budgeted for and this is what you used. But okay. You do have the option in what some other districts have and 
I say this with the disclaimer that Dina said we have to talk about this in more detail before we do this. There are some other districts who have gone to the extent of creating a special reserve fund for HRA. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so I thought it was. Is that like a truck fund, you know, like you do in the town? Similar to what you do, it's it, rather than going to the voters and saying, I want to take $10,000 out of my FY19 surplus and put it to the building reserve fund. You literally just pull it out so it's tracked separately from your general fund. Okay. Yeah. So revenue and expenditures would just come right out of that one fund. So every year when we're budgeting money, it would come into that line item and every expenditure that's coming out would come right out of that line item. So it's truly tracked separately. Would you recommend that? I'm going to stick with Dina's recommendation that we need to have further conversation. It makes sense to me, yes, mm -hmm. but if there's legal ramifications around yeah, doing so, I need to know that before gotcha. I can come to you and say I think that this is what we need to do, gotcha. but know that it is a discussion that I have had and have listened to other business managers discuss. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I'm sorry, I recalled that, it, that the HRA would be, would be handled kind of like the lunch fund or whatever. It's, where yeah, but it's not. It didn't happen. Didn't happen. It was supposed to be that way. It, it um, didn't okay. happen. I don't know so why. It just to, to just to tell you, Carl, we've been on this a half hour. In terms is, of what you knew, I was going to be one. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Just want to keep you up to date. Well, okay, yes. Bonnie was just um, a yeah. No, 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 no. Just meeting. to let you know, I'm in terms of a meeting, I'm, I'm going to make a suggestion that maybe we, we watch our emails closely and and work with our calendars to understand this is a priority because. I don't want to set a meeting now and have these reports come sooner so that we could set the meeting sooner or have them come later and us not be ready for the date we set. So yep. I'm going to suggest that you kind of stay on your emails, watch them closely, and as soon as we can get the reports and, and Tara authorizes them to us, then Lindy and I can start looking at different line items in this budget. I don't I don't want to be the, the, the gloom and doom person, but it is, it is unlikely we will get to a $300,000 mark without some sort of structural change. Yeah. And I have no idea what that might be. Do you need some instruction as to that tonight? Probably <laughs> not, because I don't know the scope of it. Okay. Once, I, once we know Got the you. scope of it, then it will be more realistic to ask for that. Because right now, we're just going to be grabbing yeah. from here and there. <laughs> I do know that Lindy and I didn't put enough money into this budget to to uh, get to that number with any great ease. It, it, it's going to take some, yeah. like I say, some structural reorganization okay. of something. Uh, two things. One, I think possibly for our pie chart, that HRA might be a really nice uh, thing for people to be able to see. H how much of the total benefit package is the HRA or how what? much of the I, I'm not sure how many pie charts you're doing and, and maybe it's some further well, discussion the, but yeah it is one of the discussion items is if, how many if you ones right because if we we're how looking at the total budget how much how of it much is our HRA I, I think that's it. okay you got know. you got you how much which is D different from health insurance oh, so total. there's there's it's kind of like a, a slice of the pie that's similar yeah. but different yes. you know it's still well as of the, right now yeah at the 65 percent funding the hra is sixty four thousand eight hundred and five dollars sixty four thousand and is that somewhere in the budget it's I just rolled up the something. object code to 11 to give you that number. She, she's sorry, so I didn't. It was in her spreadsheet that she has on her I computer. Just, got you. Got you. Okay. Only I filtered just for that code to give you that number. Right, because um, like uh, the, the guidance, the guidance council is HRA entry is, is special under the guidance session. Yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah Teachers yeah, yeah. are under regular ed. Blah, got you. Blah, blah. Got you. That's broken out. Your budget is broken out by function, and then each object code is under each budget. Function. Object code, sorry. That's the three digit code. That's when you're looking at your sheet that 101 is salaries, 102 11 is teacher salary. salaries. I'm going to do it all this time. So okay, you're the coding. I know. Your blue one. Yeah, no. I know. Stapled yeah, one. Right. That yeah. one. It's just so the, when you're looking at that, the function, you'll see that very look top at the front one page. is Thank you. 1100. That's the function. That function Thank you. This is a very good instruction. definition. And then each code underneath it is the object that supports that function. So your salaries, your benefits, your supplies, your books, yep. each yep. of those numbers. Those are all the numbers that I get to change as of 7-1. 
courtesy of the state of Vermont's Universal Chartered of Accounts. Okay. The Object ice. and function. Great. Um, before we put this uh, discussion to bed, when do we think, just for just for general planning sense, so you think you think you're getting something in the next day or two? So they tell the me. The so we're thinking the end of the week, and promises. you're going to think about a, a week. So we should be thinking about the end of the month. Does that run into? Mm -hmm. Does that run into? Our side, so our side, uh, February break. Yep. Yep. And also. So they do it before that, right? Yes, so I would hope break. that we'd be able to do it. Yeah. yeah, and also our <laughs> next meeting we need to change because it's on town meeting day. And we're, I mean, we can have it, but Kara will not be able to be here, right? Because you're going to be at other town meetings. My town meetings are in the afternoon and usually done by 6.30. Okay. So a nice long day. You don't mind coming to a... <laughs> I do 16 okay. to 18 hour days right now anyways. Okay. We're good. <laughs> well, I don't know. When is Stockbridge's town meeting? In the morning. In the morning. Okay. Oh, Rochester's, though, is in the evening, right? I don't know what Rochester's Mine are all the night before. I have three the night before. Ours might be the one on night before. I don't have this year's book. Um, looks like it, it, church on Monday. Monday. Monday at 7 p.m. So okay. Never mind then. If everybody's cool with that. And then traffic. So we're looking at the eight, the week the week of the 18th, hopefully. The week of the 17th of February, yeah, somewhere in there. Hopefully by then. Maybe the 19th is looking like the best. The Thursday. This and Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. Um, all right, so budget. Like the 500. What's that? Anybody else felt manager wise? Um, your current bonds. Okay. Are done. So there's a group in this is one, one, ten. ten. Yes. Okay. I'm sure that Tara can yeah, tell us so because that would be very useful to know like a code that you could even color code. Cool. But this is why I'm sort of hoping yep. to see if I can get the whole thing. Yep. All right. Um, you have a question? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, just you know, under operation of building and so on when it comes to like 610 and 733. Uh, when it's the general supplies and furniture and fixtures. Mason, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble. Oh, what uh, function code are we starting with? 2610 on page 8 of 11. 2610. 10. 10. Operational building 610 and 733. And determining that, is that based on? An inventory of what we own? Sorry, 733, you said furniture and fixtures. That's if stuff needs to be replaced for furniture and fixtures. That's normally what drives that number. Replacements. I'm just That's curious like at what point do we maintain an inventory list so we know? Yes, we have a fixed asset list. We have to import it every year with our audit. Oh, what was missing? That's one of the Expensive trimmer right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I just noticed that, you know, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Increase. I uh, definitely look forward to seeing the audited numbers of what we did in 2019 for replacement, how much we cost of replacing fixtures and furniture. Well, those are hard to fix. I, I mean, like, uh, uh, the, on grounds, you know, we have repairs and maintenance. Uh, Four thousand and what, nothing for the next budget. I mean, are the building separate from the landscaping issues. Mason, that was a, most of that was an old quote from the um, Rochester High School when you had to maintain the baseball fields, the soccer fields. They had to be lined. They had to be mowed. They had to be all that, all that stuff. And that's just gone. We don't have high school fields that we need to maintain anymore. And at some point, a, a previous board um, had asked to have that that cost broken out. What was it costing to maintain the high school fields? So, like of the ownership of the marquee, we could uh, put that on eBay and recuperate, maybe buy a couple of fixtures for the lead problem. There you go. I mean, what do we own that we can get rid of? <laughs> so, you, Mason. You. Yeah, me. <laughs> 
Well, the public audits have it have at least rolled up the list. I don't believe they have the individual. You've got uh, 67 mice, 43 keyboards, two ergonomic <laughs> keyboards. You know, an old Betamax player. But there there is there is at least a, a, a general thing, and I believe you roll that up from some sort of asset list. It's main, yeah, we maintain a full box. So there's there's there, there's there's a, a fuller list we could probably get our hands on. If you uh, send us an email, we can see what we can do about that. Um, all right, uh, principal's report. Well. All right. Uh, exciting things. Farm to school, which we've already talked about. Um, lead testing. That was fun. Uh, what we found in Stockbridge is it was all the same type of fixture, meaning literally all those automated hand washers that you see in the restrooms, like the staff staff restroom or the the automated the, ones the automated ones it turned what those are like the new ones right yeah, those are it is but they were not manufactured in a place that followed the lead oh. is what we're not they were the cheap ones sure. yeah. uh, so we have a quote and we're moving forward that what we do know about this is you're supposed to save your receipts so you get reimbursed for anything that hit as high and then there's the custodial closet as well the sink in there which got a whole different conversation if you're filling up your water bottle in the custodial closet. Hopefully you're not in your It's a little bit, you gotta have some fun with it. So that's where we're at. We have a quote and we're scheduling the work. So do you need, a, do you need a motion from us to approve it? It's under the $5,000 amount, so. But I didn't know if there just had to be something officially noted for the reimbursement or whatever. Uh, not that I saw this. in the, paperwork and a notification has gone home to parents as well in their state folders and we specified specifically that which found, uh, which uh, hand washing stations it was because they didn't want anybody to think it was the water fountain. Right. So more than one quote? It says a plumber has come and given us a quote. Does that mean there'll be other plumbers giving quotes? Uh, we did, at the time this report was written, we weren't sure what the quote was gonna come in at, if it was gonna be over the $5,000 amount. What we've learned with our plumbers and electricians is some people, especially if they're local, are quicker to come and do the work than other people, so that's a bit of a factor too. Then support of the local customers. Sorry. Yeah. And we basically followed the same procedure in terms of notifying parents, et cetera. Our results were a little different, so we're more of a mi mixed bag. We had five locations that were above the four, uh, I learned a new term, PPB, parts per billion. Um, one uh, was a drinking fountain in the preschool room. So we automatically uh, shut that down the next day, and there's an alternative water source in there. Another one of ours is a drinking fountain over in the high school, in the part of the high school that we're no longer using. That's also shut down. Water's turned off and there's signage. So one of the new ones? It was one of the new ones. Um, hand washing sink in the art room, uh, which we've left water turned on to. No one drinks from there. We have to leave it on because it's the only sink to wash your hands after you use the bathroom. And um, then we have two other sinks Plumber's coming in, plumber came in last Thursday. We're still waiting for our quote to see what he's uh, guesstimating there. It appears as though we will completely replace the drinking fountain in the preschool room. Um, and then it looks to be like possibly faucet replacement for the sinks. Um, one of the good things about both schools is that we did, they, they do two draws. They do a first draw, which is uh, after you, uh, immediately when you turn the water on. Then they do a second draw, which is 30 seconds after the water has run. And the point of that is, the 30 second one, is you get a sense of is the problem further up in the system. And for all of ours, um, the water cleared significantly on the 30 second draw. So they believe most of the problem is in the faucets and the solder used to, I know nothing about plumbing, so I'm out of my element here. The solder used to put those faucets together. Um, so uh, we will retest once we have all these installed. Um, as Lindy said, the state pays up to a certain amount, so we'll process through that, make sure we get as much reimbursement as we can. Um, and then I said, like I said, there's a retesting process that we'll take on, the, on our five sites and your four sites, four sites. How's the roof? Sorry, Ethan. How's the roof? Uh, the roof seems to be so doing fine. 
knock on wood. Um, I think plastic. Oh, plastic, sorry, knock on something. Um, but the roof's doing fine at this point. We haven't had any major leaks. We had one minor leak. Um, we believe we can continue to, to limp along with that. Okay, thank you. Great. And then the only other thing I would say is I spent my day with a representative from Visbit. And by my day, I mean my day. Uh, <laughs> it's our insurance. Uh. They send a safety consultant around to do, uh, to check your anything and everything you can think of. Uh, what's an example? Is this just Dark Bridge or did this happen right just a, They come to, they're different site visits. Coming next week. Right. Right. I'm going to do better than Lindy on the test because I'm asking her the question before you call. Uh. <laughs> 9 to 2.30. Uh, but it was very informative. We went over any like safety concerns from exterior doors to shades to uh, recommendations to update to safety plans. Did you um, notice the push bars out of the multifunction room and that it needs to be replaced? Uh, that's not even high enough up on the list. Okay. I'm sure he did. I haven't seen his full report. We oh. talk about a lot and he takes a ton of notes. It's really informative. We can um, report out on it once we have it, but it has to be done in an executive session because it's considered safety planning gotcha. and you don't want anybody to learn all your secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so they can, so they can yeah. be safe. I mean, right. who would want that? Exactly. Well, and you had to keep a straight face while he said these well, things. I was wondering, should you be washing your hands in lead water? That's like, I, I don't know, but I am. I'll tell you, I'll tell you the honest truth. I am. So I don't know they are. Just FYI, this bit is actually your insurance company. It's a Vermont School Board's Insurance Trust, ESBIT, and they come around and do these safety audits of schools to prevent anything they can prevent from occurring. If they can help us fix something that's got a potential liability so that liability never happens, you know, our insurance rates and there, they stay down. There's grant money tied to it. So the advantage of doing it was that I kind of went in with some of my concerns and he actually brought them up before I could even get them off my plate. And if it's in his report, then there's some grant funds to support those changes. That's great. This guy really has a good track record of being proactive. You know, they'd rather give us $1,000 to fix something before someone falls and gets injured and you're looking at a several thousand dollar I have a few rocks I have to have around. Right. They're too close to actual I did want to comment on um, the uh, performance that was here. It's on your, on your list. Yeah. Uh, I was here and it was uh, a really great performance with Rochester and Stockbridge uh, winter concert th that Mallory put on with the kids. There was uh, singing, there was a, they did rock band, they did um, bass guitar, they um, did electric piano, percussion instruments. Percussion instruments. I saw the they, setup, it was an amazing setup. Yeah, I had to leave setup. to go out of town, but uh, it was an amazing setup. Yeah. I'd never seen a music concert set up quite like that before. It was great. I was either, if it was Joanne, I was talking with somebody, I don't know if it was Joanne or somebody, but the kids were excited about, oh, I was talking with Joanne. One Stockford Jester and one Rochester Jester who grown particularly close whenever we have these events they're all they're together a lot and they came up and they said mrs Boyle, look we look like a real band <laughs> <laughs> and they did it was quite an elaborate setup yeah cool. it was really really great so i wanted to give a shout out to that yeah. all right well thank you okay 9.1 annual report update uh yes we uh, jenny and i are making a good team yeah. and making a lot of progress on this uh, the main thing I wanted to bring up to you, um, and we are going to have color coding, but this is the main thing is the difference in price, and I got this from Penny today, I just sent it to you, but we're talking roughly, if it's a thousand copies as it was last year, the difference of $1,488 was last year's black and white, $2,268 um, for four color. Is that four pages in color? Uh, or, or what is that? I didn't understand what that meant. I don't know what 4-4 four, four is. Is that like four ink colors? Yeah, I think I something like that. Yeah, okay, four so it's colors. not just four pages yeah, in color. I think it meant it's the total thing. Well, there's, there's, so there, there, there's four color printing, which I think is, if it says four, four. This is okay. color th color throughout. So right, it's right. Four, four color throughout. Right, that's, that, that, that means that it's, 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 it's it's not spot printing like you might use if you were um, uh, the, you, you might use a, just a particular green for your logo and just have that be the only color and that's a cheaper kind of color run than, than a four color color run which is what that is yeah four this four. is a four color color run so i want to just give you the idea that what we're planning which is definitely color 
Um, and I, I have, we're going to get better at these uh, pie charts and putting them in. My computer sort of messed up today. Um, um, but also the graphics and the information. Um, but I wanted to make sure the board know that we were to do this the way we want to. We are spending um, 600, is it 600? No, it's 700, almost 800, $800 more. So, so uh, uh, before I go any cents more, 80 cents more a book. Yeah, if, before I go any further, I just want to get make sure that um, we're okay this is something that. we want to do. Well, I, some of your ideas are to do color pie charts. Color pie really charts. Also, the, the, what we're working right now is that there are eight colored sections, and literally one from the introduction to the warning is a different, and that comes in, they, they have a header on top of each page that's a different color, and then there's another header. Uh, it didn't, it, it didn't come out. out. Right? I didn't get it. No. I have a it, couple. No, I didn't, didn't print out enough for everybody, it's but also if people didn't. wanted to just take a This look. is also not as, um, it's not anywhere it is broken up color-wise, so, but it gives you some idea. And I have, I have in Both here. Sec different sections, and the t each section is called the. I can pass along item. just the idea of the, the map. And sections. The, yeah, I think, and I mean, we're just, we're trying to get it. So, so much here, more informative this I year. I just have, here, pass this along and just look at this. This is sort of a, a rough idea. I'm not crazy about the exact way we did the map. It is amazing to look at this SU on a map. You realize it's three valleys with almost that no way to get realizes. from one end of it to the other. Bruce, I don't know how face. you've done this. Yeah. I think I, we should not show a, a map to anybody who's applying for this job. Oh, we should. <laughs> We it's show like, it big. Yeah, it's organizational just, chart. That, yeah, the organizational chart is Jenny's idea, which I think is great. Um, some of the stuff too is just getting what we need to describe and yep. figuring out. Right now, even at this, we're at, we're talking more pages too than we had last year. We last year. There's 24. As I remember, and we're talking. Um, so with each page, it's yeah, going to increase talking, the price as well because. Yeah, it's going to be. It's going to work. Uh, probably, I wouldn't be surprised. At 26, we're going to be looking at probably 25. I mean, it is our major. You know, we're looking at this as an informational booklet, not just. You know, that they're going to. Jenny's thinking is that this is a resource that they're going to want to keep around with stuff to look at. For the future, right? Explanations, yeah, They're explanations and contact numbers and all kinds of things. So, it's it's a bigger deal, but that, that really is your whether you want to go forward, where the board wants to go forward with this kind of thinking. Um, I certainly like it, but it is it is you know that's when we're talking about three hundred thousand plus dollars in overages. Um, an extra, you know, five, six hundred dollars in a annual budget. Maybe we could do it in black and white and make it work with pie charts and things like that. With Greg, um, what's your call? I, I, I like the way this is going. Okay. I think that anything that makes that makes our our, our uh, information easier to understand okay. uh, is better. But I agree. You know, I, I'd like us to, um, you know, maybe think about. How, how to organize the, 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 the tabular information for, for a time while we get get a handle on the budget because I would hate for you to, to, to lay the whole thing out and then we're like, yeah, it's black and white. <laughs> yeah. we, could also, no, no. we could also mail in black and white but have it available in color, you know, PDF on the website. And you can also, you know, there's, there's all kinds of, now that I've gotten into Excel, there's all kinds of different charts you can use. Oh, sure. bar, bar charts can sometimes work better with colors, and they, they even talk about this little tutorial I saw. It says, depending on the kind of information you're dealing with and how close things are, you may want to go with bar charts or different types of charts as opposed to pie charts. That's just one, one, one option. So it really, it comes down to, I think this is also going to be our first stab at it, um, that I think we'll get through it and we'll realize, oh gosh, we forgot. Um, oh, the main thing I want to do is get a template out, and this is where Jenny and I are getting at. We're getting a template of what the whole thing looks like. And then we'll, it's really figuring out how much information we can put in and what to explain. Um, sure. Because um, there's only so much room, and you could start writing. I, I wrote a page and a half just on the SU, 
then I suddenly realized, ah, it's probably too much. <laughs> right, because you want to condense it. It's all the stuff I got from voting when we went to vote on the budget at the S full SU board meeting. There was a lot about, you know, and I, at least I want to put in there the details of when the vote happens, who's, right. who's voting on it, because I think that's a lot of people. Last year was like, well, these numbers, why aren't we in control of these numbers? Yeah, it's no, like, no, well, that, you that, are. That, that, that's, that, that's a very good point. Yeah. Um, anyway. I, I, I like the idea of color. I like the idea of you're being budget conscious. Okay. Keep us in the loop. Go. Cool. Yeah. Thank Any you. Question? Is there a way to maybe, um, when you price it, maybe ask Penny if you can put the colors of the charts or the pie charts and stuff on a few pages, and then at least you'll have some of it? And well, that's it, like, almost like an appendices of pie charts, and that would be the color for color. Right, so it's not like the whole book be colored. That's, but just, that's certainly an option. I mean, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then maybe. And how is it bound? Because maybe there's a cheaper way to have it bound. Because um, the idea is the material, getting the materials easier, but maybe the binding can be cheaper. Oh, it's well, that. that's true. This, you know, this adds money. If we go to black and white, the we have less student color. art, yeah. but we have more information. The right. priority would be probably toward information over Well, we could creative. still put black and white student art on, too, if somebody drew a picture. Well, sort of like the stuff drawn, that the, um, the, the Herald does. Right, Christmas. exactly, with the Christmas thing. Like um, but I think yeah. it's Just one thing, uh, Bonnie, I did put it out a while ago about art, and I saw your thing to Jane about pictures. I haven't received anything from anybody. Okay, so if I could please, from both schools, please. Um, I, I, I have a question. Yeah. My art teacher had a question. She does a website where they she uploads the kids' art to it, and then you can order that art on an apron or Art Sonia. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, can you send that to me? Please? Okay, that was her question. If send it to me so then I can yeah, I can look at. All right. Good. Um, one other thing to think about, just an idea that popped in my head based on Jenny's comment, mm -hmm. you know, the, when you say, okay, well, we could mail in black and white or have a PDF, we could also think about, you know, the, the idea of if the mailing if the mailing referred to, if we did have, you know, a full PDF or a full explainer online, I don't know how technologically savvy uh, our communities are mm -hmm. in the main, and I know for me, as, you know, a, a, a techie guy anyways, I'm probably more skewed towards that, but the idea of about maybe mailing less and putting more online right, might, be, I, might be something. Can we legally do that? I don't know. That's what I, I mean. I, I, I'm pretty sure that there's a there's the, the bits of information that the report have to contain, mm -hmm. but doesn't I, you know doesn't necessarily have to contain you know, student right. order pie charts or whatever. Right, but I think we definitely need to send it to people because there's and a lot of people. Maybe in another year you could send a postcard a month ahead and say if you would like a paper. Uh, return this or whatever, and then you only maybe have to send out half of them. I like that, the way you said that, too, is that you have to... You give them an incentive by getting it early. Yeah. Oh. Oh. You know, or something like that. Okay. Right, right, but you, you don't have to wait. Right, right. Mail yeah. update is the same as the email. Date. Right. right. You right. return the card if you are declining or a paper copy. Or email or something. And, yeah. and sending back the, the yeah, email. That's a good idea. Yeah. But then if somebody doesn't send it back, we still automatically send them their paper, so we're not, we're, we're providing it for and everybody regardless. Like in order to save money, right. the budget. Yes. Right. Yeah. Well, and and the know, trees. As I say, we're yeah, talking the trees, the six to eight hundred dollars is so not a small amount of money different right. for color. So I think it's, we'll definitely take it in consideration to try and figure out ways to. I think All right. There are, there are Thank you. People that would do it, look at it. Oh, yeah. I think you're right. I think it's um, a smart way to do it. Facilities pricing were approved. So, Carl, I'm just thinking about this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask that we defer that to the next meeting because um, I think it might change when I meet with the Bisbet. And I didn't put two and two together here quickly enough, so I can pass on that. Okay. Time. Great. Um, all right. Uh, building committee update. Uh, the building committee is uh, currently still working out what information uh, it wants to pull out of the, uh, the, the report to pass forward. Um, we're, we, since uh, we, we, we don't really have a consensus, I think we're going to need have to have one more meeting about that. But I think what's important is that we do not let the progress of the build, building committee stop us from being able to hit some milestones about getting this community engagement process begun. 
because yeah, really where the building committee is is in just you know what do we say about these numbers do we want to pull out these numbers this way or do we want to look at those numbers that way for the most part and do we want to talk about some of the the, the, the you know are some of the assumptions and conversations that we had during the building committee meetings germane or important to be to, to be brought forward as part of the report or as things that we'll talk about again in a different context at a community meeting I think that it's very important that we have that, that we as a board because the board is the person that's in charge of this process um, that we as a board are able to have um, information uh, I'd like us to have, you know, not in the town booklets, but I'd like us to have handouts at town meeting that, that summarize what the process is and what's, you know, where we're going and, and when we want to have community meetings. So I think we need to, to, to sort that out, I think, as a board, and then the building committee will say what the building committee says, and we'll go from there. Um, but we need to, I think, we need to move forward, and, and, and I think, the ability to have information about the next step in the community engagement meetings at town meeting uh, in March is what's going to drive getting attendance to those meetings. So we need to, I, I think, as a board, figure out when do we want to have those community engagement meetings. Do we have, do we have any uh, information on that mediator? Well, we're going to come up with a consensus of how we would, that we all agree on it first, don't we? we can't. Well, this, as a building, uh, right. we, we, we as a committee, I mean, putting the, the building committee hat back on, I don't personally think there's more information that we could glean. I don't think there's more things for us to understand in that report, the contents of that report. But I the, think that I The report out is where is the debate to do. Right, correct. And, and there have been several, I'm, loud. I'm not going to lie, I don't know what draft number we're on, uh, several draft numbers that have floated around and now it's really at the point that we need to come back together to confirm on draft. Right, but a, I think a report that out from the yeah, from the building right. committee. But we, yes. what you're saying is there's really no more information that we can get out of Black River that would change uh, what we've discussed. Right, or there's no more there, yeah. there, there's there's no more information that we're going to get out of um, you know at one point in time we thought it was very important that we that as part of the building committee report we had the information on on the uh, um, building uh, cost per building, and we've been told we really can't get that without a lot more work. So we're not going to have that in this in this report. Right. I thought we agreed on those numbers. The, the, no, no, no. the, the operational cost per building. We wanted to remember we one of our early meetings. We thought it was important to discuss yeah, how much propane is used in each building. Can we get an answer to the question about what the community engagement? Where we're if we're yeah, we have a whole update on it. Um, that, that, that is part of the building report. That's the next. Right, so but that's the nine. Transitioning to the next. Carl, you said you want to do this in different order. But no, I, what I'm trying, what I'm trying to, 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 to say is, is that at the, the, the as part of the, the, the board, we need to get the community. One of the things that the building committee discussed at great length was what are you know. What does this report mean that we need to bring to the community? What do we need to engage about? And then we said, well, but our charge is to analyze the numbers of the report. It's not to analyze the politics or the community feelings or the sentiment around the report. It's just to analyze the report. And so some of the some of the the, 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 the discussions have been back and forth about, well, do we talk? Do do we bring up in our report some of the some of the uh, 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 questions that we had going forward that the report triggered? Is that part of the report, or is that part of something that just gets brought into the conversation of the community update meetings? What I think is really important is that we don't, we could say, okay, the board still had the, 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 the building committee still hasn't uh, uh, formally given the board a report, so the board can't schedule a community engagement meeting. I think the board needs to, I, I, I think part of what I'm saying about the building committee update is while we have not produced a formal report, I think our work, for the most part, besides creating that report, is done. I don't think there's more well, how, how to create out the board, of that. You, how can the board distribute to the community if the board hasn't heard what's going on in the 
Right, but I, well, I'm, I'm not saying we should, I'm saying that, so, okay, I, I'm, 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 I'm not explaining. Well, here's the thing, I, I'm looking at the last notes, and it said Rob Garner volunteered to write a narrative for the building committee. Yeah, he wrote, he, he oh, wrote that? Oh, and, and there is, so there, you around. can see about a, a, a so we, a so that one is not, narrative. that's not ready to be presented to that's us. That's correct. Correct, because there, because there's, there's, there's other there's narratives like that are out there that people, that, that, that other people have put together that, that say other things. Right. The, so the, the committee, committee needs the committee to, needs to come you, back together and, and, and But these forward. are clearly the political issues, not the financial issues, right? We have the financial issues. We, we, we yeah, have just saying main, that the, these different, the main, the financial these issues. different drafts take a different political take on this issue. Right, or they, they, or they include political information or they don't. Well, how about we get to look at all of them? I mean, I don't know. I, 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 I mean, how long are they? Ten pages each? No. Two? Four. Um, well, that's what I'm just saying. I, I, I think maybe it's time for us to just read some of this stuff and get, and then to be able to talk about it. Because otherwise, it feels like it feels like we're almost we're hearing about this turmoil, and we're not actually seeing something to make a decision about. And so I think sure. if you if you give us these reports, we can then say those of us on the board who aren't on the building committee can say this is what we like. Do more of this, this and then we can give you a clear instruction. We had a final meeting, and we agreed. We had a quorum, and we had an agreement of what we were looking at. And two people were missing. So we agreed. It was all good. We had it finalized, and the two people that weren't there decided that that wasn't going to work. Yes, and one of those people was me. Exactly. I I, what? I think, the, I think the, minutes, the minutes did not indicate that there was a vote. I, I, that's I, true. I, we didn't have minutes because we, we haven't had another meeting. I think the reality is these issues are more, I, I think the next step clearly is, and uh, you can decide what draft you want to read or what, if we're going to have another meeting and pull together a draft, but community engagement is essential. Yeah. We need well, to that's figure what I want to hear about. It is, but we need Probably to see the information. No, I, no, I don't. With, I, those, with whatever I mean, if you can't, well, if you can't, Draft, then I want to see several drafts right. and make a decision about which draft I think is right. But I, I, I give me copies. There's Everybody one needs one. I, I think the concern is also the um, we're getting this information out to the public, well, and and what the what we're presenting to the public it is very important. Um, there's that is a December draft. I have a January draft. Uh, there's well, so four drafts. No, no, that's since fine. Then, I'm saying so. I. I let me know when we have all the, the different drafts, and then I can, we can read them and compare them and say which one seems the most like what we're at. I mean, clearly what's been coming through from lots of this, this is a very contentious process. Right. And that um, we may not be able to make a decision until we hear from this community. Right. And oh, I sure. think, and that as we talked about last time, and this is why I'm a little surprised in some ways that this is so contentious. I thought it was pretty clear after our last meeting with the building that we have a basic question we have to ask first to our both of our communities: is that do we want to be together before we make any decisions about these buildings? And so it seems to me we have to get there first, and that's where this comes to, because I don't think we can make decisions. I mean, and maybe we did jump the gun by having this whole report done before we knew that answer to that question. But uh, right, because the building committee was not charged with. In this report, there's nothing about whether to be merged or unmerged. Yeah. And so this committee should not even be looking at that. No, I don't think that is really a, a, a right. question. It's, we need to look at what's actually yeah. in this report yeah. and just report the, the facts. Only, the only thing I would add to tonight, tonight's budget helps us maybe look at this lens a little. I agree. We have to find out what do these communities want. Yeah. I would also offer that we have an obligation once once we figure out what are the two or three possibilities they might want, we have to provide additional information that lets them determine can we actually afford what we want. I mean, yeah. We're looking at a budget tonight. We want a lot of things, but we're not going to get at some of them. No. And I think <clears throat> so. What I what I hope I'm trying to convey is that we have to figure out what is it the community wants, and then we have to do the work to say, okay, this is what it's going to take if this is what you want. Yeah. Because yeah. I think to not and do that and kind of leave people in a void of, of 
also, yes. I've also heard you, I've now heard you say this to me like three or four times, and, and months have gone by with the building committee and stuff like that. And um, understandably, people are impatient. I mean, let's do it. Why have we not scheduled a community forum? And that's what I was just saying. Okay, we, need to, we need to have some information, I think to present a town meeting day where we are going to have a significant group of the community gathered and a lot of people that don't give a crap about them, do not give a lot or care directly about the school. I so, apologize for that. No, no, no. But let me finish. So having having you know having something where we at least decided on some dates where we have some idea about whether or not there's going to be a mediator or if we're going to work on that, we'll call them, we're going to get information on that now. But I think what's important is that we the building committee will say what it says, and we can look at all that information, and we can write whatever we write as a board. Well, um, you can, but, I but, would but, accept a report from the building committee that has two sure, conflicting reports. Sure, That's but the, my, 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 my point here is that we need to, I think we need to, as a board, put together an agenda and be able to say at town meeting day that we're going to have a community engagement. The first community engagement day is going to be March 23rd. It's going to be April 1st. Great. Uh, but I mean, we need to, I think we really need to get off the schneid and, and yeah, move yeah. that along. So we had a meeting with a community engagement. Yes, good, thank you. Our facilitator, she has since retired um, from the business. <laughs> well, because, because she wanted to know. Water. No, 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 no. no. She told me ahead of time she would retire, so I knew that going in. But she's been through several, she's worked with a lot of small towns, and she gave us some pointers on what to do, what not to do, and she gave us two recommendations of who to use. And her two recommend recommendations of what? Sorry, of who to use as a facilitator. Who to use. Gotcha. She gave two names um, who we have not pursued, but we can pursue with your permission. But her recommendation is the, and in speaking with these facilitators, you can, um, they can guide you through the process, but she comes from the experience of administration, a community facilitator, and a board member. So she was able to offer quite the insight. She's seen ones where community engagement fails is where it's a one-shot deal, and there's no follow-through. And her recommendation was to have multiple planned out, very specific times, first starting with a vision, and then the facilitator works with the board, and takes all that data from the first meeting and then starts to put dollars amount to what that would take, which is what that building committee report is going to help us. Or the, the actual engineering study, not the yep. report, Good. is going to help us do and look at what can we afford. Um, and the reason she was coming off a successful uh, community engagement piece from uh, the Bristol Mount Abe School District and basically said they've stepped up their game because they don't want to be reactive and be in crisis mode. So she really encouraged to start and think out the process. She also said they were all separate events. They were not with something else. They were not with town meeting. They were not with a school board meeting. They were not with anything else but the community engagement and that the goal of the day was clear and the facilitator runs the whole process. Runs the whole process, thank you. And okay. will walk us what to do what to do, and um, it's only as successful as we as a group make it, yep. so we have to prove to the community that once we get the information, we're going to follow through and find out the facts and present the facts back out, mm -hmm. and not just hold on to the information and wait for it. You have to follow a very specific timeline okay. that they help you set out. Right, and each of, each of the facilitators have to have their own effective strategies for making sure you really do have broad representation from your communities okay. versus... You know, I show up because I really like something. Lindy shows up because she really doesn't like something. That doesn't give us broad representation from our community. Okay. So they're they're skilled at doing that. And it would have to come from meeting with you guys as a board first on how you want to go about doing this and investing in this because this is an investment to make it successful. I, um, I would like to make a motion that we direct our principals to follow up on this. Oh, just one sure. I would just like to say, show me the money. Well, I mean, the, the people are going to want to know the money first, not three meetings in, because that is horrible. Okay. I mean, that's my opinion. That's how I feel. Mm -hmm. I sell cars. That's what people want to know. How much does it cost me? Right. Because they have to fit it in their budget. Well, and that was the other suggestion. It wasn't just like, here's the big total. This is why. Um, break it down to taxes so people know what it's going to happen. That's fine. 
but they've got to know ahead of time that they're going to be mad after meeting three. So that might be a decision for who we go with of these options, is somebody who can understand that we need to deal with money first. Okay. Do you need a formal vote, or can we just... Well, what, 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 what part one, of the money let's... can you deal with, though, is my question. Let me make one, other, let me make one suggestion first. Perhaps it should be uh, a board member or two, and Lindy and I to meet with these two... I'd be happy to. Folks. Interview. I'd be happy to. And, and we're just assuming that one or the other of them is interested. They may all be booked up. There's a lot of community engagement work going on. Right. Yep. And so the, the, the first question I would have is, Based on what you heard from that person, is the timeline of being able to at least announce what's going on at town meeting day reasonable? I mean, I can't answer that, that, Carl, because I don't know how soon, if either one of them are interested and available, how soon. Right, right, but, do you, but there also seemed to be a piece, a, a component of before they started doing community engagement, they would want to uh, spend time with the board. So it sounds like there needs to be some front loading of either additional meetings or looking at schedule. And if, can we get that all organized so that we can, because the worst thing would be to say, here's a flyer that says we're meeting May 23rd. And then, oh yeah, we had to cancel that because we couldn't make it work, sorry. No, you wouldn't. If, if, well, let's, we're, if we're meeting. Let's just go ahead. Yeah. I think, let's let's go ahead and interview these people and I'd be happy to be on any committee to interview these and people. And then come back out and report to Yeah, and, then, and, and let's get this moving, because yeah, it's time. Um, yeah, I, I think we do for the meeting, but I mean, I think we need to get the ball rolling on getting the, the, the person to facilitate the oh, yeah, meeting. Yeah, I think it's two being able to. the community meeting, I thought that was the whole plan. Yes, I th yeah. yes, I'm just saying I want to get the structure. Well, we, I mean, we could have gotten together in, in January. We could, I mean, here Right, and we can, and what, what I'm trying to say is I, th I want us to get the structure of the, the ball rolling in the community meeting. We can have we can have if we're going to have an, another building committee meeting and, 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 and hash this out more. We like can do sure. that. We can do that, but I want us to not wait to plan the community no, engagement stuff until sense. the building committee is wrapped up. Because I think we can, can wrap we, it up in one meeting. Can we officially? Have we officially instructed you. Good. So please yes. keep me in the loop of that. Does that enough? Do you want anybody else? Is there someone else? That wants um, depending on the schedule, I can. I'll see if I can arrange things to do it. But I would be happy to. Yeah. Good. So the for the meeting, yeah, the community. Oh, oh no, 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 not even. Because they have to talk to. We have to interview who we're using, and then that's going to be their their protocol for how this happens. Whoever we select. Okay, so but will it be at the next board meeting that you're announcing this date? Hopefully, hopefully. But we won't know until we talk to these people and find out what their schedule is like. Mm -hmm. You're hiring professionals. It's not going to be immediately. Yeah, it's definitely not going to be immediately. This is an ongoing process. So, right, but am I hearing that there is? We've got to get it right the first time. Am I hearing Very that there important. is? Sorry, am I hearing that there is another building committee meeting that happened, we, and that out of that will come some sort of combined, even disagreeing report? Is that correct? Um, Can you if, do that? If that's the will, if that's the will of the, of, of the rest. Of I mean, there's only three of us here. Yeah, know, I would like Megan, to see. Right. Well, there's. Yeah. I would like to, four would like four to see. Of, five of the committee members are here. The no, I'm saying the board. The board says that Rochester likes art and music more than Stockbridge. That's pretty much the difference in there. The, the other okay. Well, well, let's uh, let us read these reports then. If they're disagreeing reports, then I want to see both of them. But I think by, ne by next meeting, can we say we instruct you to have a final report, whether it agrees or disagrees, a final report from the building committee? Sure. Is that reasonable? Building committee yeah, members? Yeah, I mean, we need to. We, we yeah, need to we wrap need this to. up. We, we need, need to. to get we have when to. the next meeting is on town meeting day, so if we're going to be announcing our public meeting, we well, need we to also talked it. about we also talked about having a budget meeting uh, in February before the February break. So we can certainly we can certainly uh, be, be be chatting about it then. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, Let's see what the building committee wants to do. In um, terms of when we're meeting. Right. Can we set a meeting, meeting right now, or is that? Um, let's go through and do our executive session and, and finish up finish up these. Joanne, things. are you pretty much because available anytime in the evening? Um, not next week, so I'm sure that's when it'd be a great time to have it. <laughs> <laughs> you sorry. said it. Not <laughs> <laughs> next, so next week is the tenth. You're not available the tenth, but you're available the week after. That's right. Cool. Or the rest of this week. All right. Um,
All right, public comment. Um, I, oh. Yes. Can I okay. I have a question. Um, sure. Is, is Can that you speak up? Oh, of course, I'm sorry. I, I know, me too. <laughs> Um, is, is the proposed budget, or the draft? Yes, thank you. Very draft, draft. Yeah. <laughs> no Version 10. Draft, draft, draft. Is, is, that, um, is that proposed meeting upcoming, is that open to the public? Yes. Okay. Yes, our, all our meetings are open, are open to the okay, public. Okay, that's wonderful. So you, may, you may want to be in another room having, a, having an executive session, discussion, an HR matter or something. Okay. But so you, they, they, they are always open meetings. <laughs> Can we um, set a date now for that, or after your executive meeting? Um, we'll be setting a date when we talk to the other committee members for the for the building committee meeting. Yes. Talk to that report. We have to, that'll be something. If you give me your email, I'll let okay, you know what sure. you that is. Sure. But yeah. And um, of course, that is you know the, what you have in your hand is, is just notes, That's shall we say? Like um, yeah, that, uh, is, that, that, that is that is just one of the many drafts. Because there's many drafts going around, and nothing has been agreed upon or. <laughs>
<laughs> and I never really had any clue before that. It's too much. So, too much. Yes, well, well you I'm interested in doing this. I'm interested in doing that. Then when you look at it on the calendar, you're like, and it's oh, two yeah, or three yeah, nights exactly. every week. That was the other part. And I just wanted to make clear that what I commit to, I do. And so, executive alternate, absolutely. And this board, but I can't. And, uh, okay. Negotiation okay. Okay. And Good at job. the at the <laughs> as a ripple effect of you, I am going to resign as the alternative. Um, member of the SU school board. I will remain on the Rochester Stockbridge school board, but I will resign as the alternative. Huzzah, class. huzzah, huzzah. Um, Excellent. Thank you, Janie. You're very welcome. Thank you, everybody. All right, thank you, everybody. Our next meeting will be uh, March 5th, uh, town meeting day at uh, 630 in Stockbridge. Unless an earlier meeting for budget is scheduled. Ah, that's the next regular meeting. Yeah, next regular meeting. Right, gotcha. right. The, the budget, uh, a budget meeting may be scheduled. Um, Watch hey, your papers and websites. Did we? It didn't get, I'm sorry. It didn't get on there, but uh, I guess retreat is done. Oh. Oh. I thought it was supposed to. I sent it in an email to somebody. Um, when is it? For agenda. So are we not doing a retreat this month? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not great. I, it's this month. I, now I filled out the doodle poll. Yeah, yeah, I know. Only three Google. people filled out the yeah, doodle poll. I know. I filled a Google poll. Yeah. You and Lindy and Bonnie did. Oh, man. Let's see that. Okay. I'll have to check my spam thing. Was it, which, which poll was it? Uh, was doodle it a doodle A doodle one. Okay. Sorry. When? Yeah, no, we messed up on that. So Why don't we try it again? Let's try it. Because and I, for I March. didn't get it. <laughs> well, <laughs> March retreat, I think the idea March. was. Well, do we have a. Can we still do Feb? You I, end of I would love to have our retreat after we have hired a mediator and have a final building report and so maybe March. have a more yeah. final budget. So, so I think March. those three things yeah, should be in there before we have the retreat. So okay. So I think we're looking at least mid-March. Yeah. yeah, I don't think we're okay. have enough in February. Yeah. Let's, uh, uh, if everyone, if, if everyone can go through and can you resend the doodle polls? I'll do another one because that one only went through the beginning okay. of March. Okay. Yeah, do, do that and let's try to all, let's try to all commit to doing that so we can finalize that date at our, uh, our you know, February our budget meeting. To do. <laughs> yes. February, uh, mid-February mid budget oh. meeting. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So I'll moved. Make a motion. Second day. Okay. A motion has been made and seconded to adjourn. Thank you, everybody. Oh.